Ready. The appointed hour of six o'clock having been reached, I call this meeting of the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals to order. My name is Steve Judge. As ZBA chair, I want to welcome everyone to this meeting. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021 and extended by chapter 22 of the acts of 2022, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access this meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Additionally, the meeting recordings have been, uh, will be, meetings are recorded and will be, can be viewed on the, via the Town of Amherst YouTube channel and the ZBA webpage. In accordance with the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40A, and Article 10, Special Grant, Permit Granting Authority of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw, this public meeting has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties at interest. We will begin with a roll call of the ZBA members and panel for tonight's meeting. Steve Judge is present. Ms. Parks? Here. Mr. Maxfield? Here. Ms. Gilbert? Or Ms. Uh, Marshall? Present. Also attending the public hearing tonight is Maureen Pollock, planner, and Dave Wastevich, senior building inspector. The Zoning Board of Appeals is a quasi-judicial body that operates under the authority of Chapter 40A of the General Laws of the Commonwealth for the purpose of promoting the health, safety, convenience, and general welfare of the, of the inhabitants of the town of Amherst. One of the most important elements of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw is Section 10.38. Specific findings from this section must be made for our, all of our decisions. All hearings and meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the hearing, after which the board will ask questions for clarification or for additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the board will seek public input. The public speaks with the permission of the chair. If a member of the public wishes to speak, they should so indicate by using the raised hand function on their screen. The chair, with the assistance of the staff, will call upon people wishing to speak. When you are recognized, please provide your name and address to the board for the record. All questions and comments must be addressed to the board. The board will normally hold public hearings where information about a project and input from the public is gathered, followed by public meetings for each. The public meeting portion is when the board deliberates and is generally not an opportunity for public comment. If the board feels that it has enough information and time, it will decide upon the applications tonight. Each petition is heard by the, heard by the board is distinct and evaluated on its own merits, and the board is not ruled by precedent. Statutorily, for a special permit, the board has 90 days from the close of the hearing to file the decision. For a variance, the board has 100 days from the date of filing to file its decision. No decision is final until the written decision is signed by the sitting board members and is filed with the town clerk's office. Once the decision is filed with the town clerk, there is a 20 day appeal period for an aggrieved party to contest the decision with the relevant judicial body in superior court. After the appeal period, the permit must be recorded at the registry of deeds to take effect. Tonight's agenda, a public hearing, ZBA FY 2023-04, Redwood Construction, Inc. requests a special permit to modify the previously approved special permit ZBA FY 2018-21 for the proposed modifications to conditions 1, 6, 11, 12, 19, condition 4, 21, 22, 23, 25, 28, among possible others, as they relate to the proposed changes to the site plan, site amenities, building plan, and management plan under section 10.33 and 10.38 of the zoning bylaw. Located at New Re, or Re New Amherst, 266 East Hadley Road, map 16D, parcel 13, neighborhood residential RN zoning district. We will then um, have a, a 
a period of general public comment with the public can comment on any matter not before the board tonight as well as time for other business not anticipated within the past 48 hours before we begin are there any disclosures that anybody wishes to make no disclosures but steve uh you missed me on the roll call there so did, did i really uh, you did oh, you I'm blended sorry. two together but it's all right john gilbert <laughs> is uh, in fact present <laughs> that, I, i'm glad you are john and thanks for pointing that out so we've right got a wrong. full house we've got a full house um before we begin um the public hearing uh, we'll restate the uh, matter before us uh that's zba fy 2023-04 Redwood Construction Inc. requesting a special permit to modify the previously approved special permit ZBA FY 2018 21 for proposed modifications to conditions 1, 6, 11, 12, 19, condition 4, 21, 22, 23, 25, 28, among possible others, as they relate to the proposed changes to the site plan, site amenities, building plans, and management plan under section 10.33 and 10.38 of the zoning bylaw. Located at Renew Amherst 266 East Hadley Road, Map 16D, Parcel 13, Neighborhood Resident RN Zoning District. Uh, we conducted a site visit on Tuesday morning. Uh, we met with the Berkshire Design Group. Uh, we noticed that there were, we noticed, noted where the previously approved new building was to be located. We noted the, noted the previously approved change in the parking lot near the new building. We observed a standalone outdoor grill near the parking lot, which is similar in design to the proposed barbecued grills. We observed the currently approved location of the playground, the community gardens, and the proposed location of the new location of the playgrounds and the four barbecue grills. We had questions about the number and location of bike racks, the changes to the room layout of the new building. We also had questions about the completion schedule and whether the mansard roofs had all been removed as required by an earlier special permit. Ms. Marshall, is there anything else that um, was um, requested or discussed that you think is needs to be mentioned tonight? I would add that we saw the location of the previously approved new parking lot as well. Right, exactly, good, good catch. Yeah. Okay, um, I'm gonna go through submissions and then we will open it up to the applicant. Um, we have received submissions to the project summary, a ZBA special permit application dated September 8th, 2022, a management plan, management plan, additional information required for apartments, previously approved ZBA FY 2018-21, previously approved ZBA FY 2018-21 permit plan set prepared by Berkshire Design Group dated January 26th, 2018, these include one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen different site details. Uh, previously approved ZBA FY 2018 21 building plans prepared by O'Sullivan Architect, dated September 13th. These include three different plans. Previously approved ZBA FY 2020 16 special permit decision. Previously approved ZBA FY 2022-03, previously a special permit decision. Proposed, uh, the proposed permit plan set prepared by Berkshire Design Group, um, which contains 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, I think. Uh, site details, existing conditions, site preparation, overall site, site layout and planting plans, grading plans and drainage plans. Proposed building plans prepared by O'Sullivan and Architects dated January 21st, 2022. Those include four um, or three, three floor plans, a roof plan and an elevation, a sample lease, floor plan for an existing leasing office, the stormwater management report prepared by Christopher Chamberlain PE. And at our site visit, we received Two, um, I think those were set on to you, Maureen, two um, uh, visuals showing the uh, new building and the, it's the parking lot, as well as the proposed new um, playground and um, um, lawn area um, that are proposed to be changed from the existing plan. Um, 
town staff submissions include a project application report dated September 6th, but we also have one dated September 8th. A project application report updated uh, comments from the town engineer dated March 1st and comments from the town engineer dated September 7th. Um, we received the applicant's waiver request for plan requirements for a lighting plan, a sign plan, and a traffic implant, uh, impact station. Um, there's a list of complaints from 2000. 19 back to 2014. Um, were there any public, and that's a list of um, submissions. Were there any public comments? I've seen none on the list. No, no, not, not at this time. I will say that the applicant didn't provide a tenant less, uh, leasey notification form in the common areas, I believe, of, of all the apartment buildings on the property notifying of tonight's public hearing. And uh, he submitted a um, affidavit, a notarized affidavit, indicating that he did so. Okay. Great. All right. Um, who is going to present for the applicant? Please state your name for the record and address for the record. Yeah, I'll I'll go ahead and kick us off. Is is my audio coming through? Okay. Yep. Oh, good evening. Um, Board members and town staff. My name is Tyler White uh, with Redwood Construction, um, address 2082 Michelson Drive in Irvine, California, 92612. Um, before before I proceed, Maureen is David O'Sullivan in the queue that we could let him in. He's the, yeah, the yeah. architect that will be helping to present. Okay. Yeah, I'll bring him up as a as a panelist. Okay, he's coming over. Great, thank you. Um, thank you for, for the opportunity to, to present uh, tonight. I'm gonna go ahead and, and share my screen and uh, we'll get into the, the presentation. Let's see here. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, so as as was mentioned, my name is Tyler White um, with Redwood Construction. Um, presenting as well tonight uh, for the applicant team is Mario Martinez, uh, portfolio manager for the company who's assigned to uh, this property. Um, also David O'Sullivan from O'Sullivan Architects uh, and uh, Carlos Nieto from Berkshire Design Group, uh, who's the project engineer. Uh, just to, to give a little bit of a background um, for the benefit of those who um, may not have um, been on the board, uh, you know, when this project has been um, presented over the past couple of years, just a quick overview. Um, first phase of the project was, was constructed in, in 1968, and then more units were up, um, approved in subsequent years. Um, from this 1970 through 1994, um, when 182 units were built. Um, and fast forward to July of 2018, the previous owner of the property uh, was approved to construct 47 additional units, um, bringing the, the unit count to um, um, 229 units. Um, <clears throat> the previous owner uh, extended, uh, applied for an extension for that special permit because construction uh, did not commence in time and that, that permit extension was granted. Um, in, in March of 2021, um, Redwood Construction and its affiliate FPA multifamily um, closed on the property and uh, subsequently transferred the special permit in October of 2021. Um, and that brings us to um, this summer and fall when um, in July, 2022, um, we submitted in our final application to the planning department to amend the special permit, um, which uh, amendments and changes we'll, we'll cover tonight. 
So that's just a quick overview. Um, just wanted to share um, bef before we get in, into um, the various changes that are, are being requested, just wanted to, to share some colored renderings of, of, of the project, of what we hope to construct. Um, as was mentioned uh, with um, uh, the site visit report, um, the special permit is tied to the construction of, of a new amenity space with, um, with open space and with a playground, as well as uh, additional parking um, and a new 47 unit building that you see on the plan south of, of, this, of this rendering. Uh, we'll get into, again, more of the specifics of these changes and what we're requesting to be amended from the special permit as we go through, but just wanted to provide a quick overview of, of the project and show these renderings um, here, just a zoomed in view of the, the northern section um, and a zoomed in view of the, of the new 47 unit building that we're proposing to, to construct. So based off of uh, conversations I've had with Maureen, um, we've decided to go through each of the approved conditions from ZBA 2018-21, um, one by one, to share uh, the changes that are being requested. We'll focus on the conditions that are being changed or requested for change, um, but we'll go through one by one. If in, anytime any anyone has any questions, feel free to stop me or anyone who else is, is presenting and we'd be happy to clarify or um, go over any questions that you have. Um, so condition number one, a new building shall be approved within the South Point Apartments as located on the approved site plan dated January 26, 2018, having a total of 47 units with the following breakdown. One, uh, one bedroom, 40, 44 two bedroom and two three bedroom units. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to David O'Sullivan, uh, the project architect to explain the modifications we're requesting to this condition with respect to removing a utility garage and adding a, a bedroom. So David, if you, if you wouldn't mind. Um, hello, members of the board. David O'Sullivan from O'Sullivan Architects. Um, we had a- and Mr. O'Sullivan, where is your firm located? Uh, Reading, Massachusetts. Thank you. Um, when we had done it, we had taken the footprint of a two bedroom but the past owner had asked for a small garage for maintenance and a half bath for the maintenance staff. Um, the new management does not need this, does not see the need for it. So within that same footprint, um, which was our standard two bedroom, we had taken out the bedroom and, and added the little bathroom as you, in the second bathroom, as you see above um, the new, unit seen below restores it to a two bedroom. And this was on the south corner, outside corner of the new building. So it's, it doesn't change the footprint. It does not change the design other than taking the garage door we'd proposed and making it a double window like all the other units. So. Thank you, David. So the, the request for this condition would be to um, add one bedroom. You'd add one bedroom, so it'd be 45 two bedrooms and two three bedroom units. Um, so just a, a minor change on, on that one. Um, any questions there? Yeah, I'll, I'll keep going. Uh, condition number two the total number of units found on site within the South Point apartment shall not exceed 229 units. Uh, no changes being requested to this condition. The plan is to still con construct 47 new units um, to the current 182 units, bringing the, the total site uh, units to 229. So no, no change here. Condition number three, at least six units shall be set aside as affordable housing 
which is defined as a unit which could be purchased or rented by a household making up to 80% of the median income of the area. Such housing must be subject to affordable housing restrictions to, to preserve affordability in the long term. Uh, no changes to, to this condition. Uh, the, the plan is to provide these affordable housing units uh, as required. And some of the next uh, conditions are um, similar to affordability and ADA compliance uh, with no, no changes being requested. Condition number four, the affordable units and ADA units shall not be segregated from the market rate units in accordance with Article 15, inclusionary zoning of the zoning by, by law. The affordable unit shall be dispersed throughout the development and shall be comparable to the market rate units in terms of the quality of design, material, and general appearance. Uh, no changes requested to this condition. Uh, the applicant plans on, on meeting this condition as, as worded. Same with condition number five, all affordable housing units shall be marketed through a suitable housing entity authorized to assist applicants in attaining affordable housing. Uh, the applicant plans to do this and go through the, the appropriate channels to, to market these affordable units. Condition number six is uh, a condition we're requesting for uh, some modifications to. All, all parking shall follow the approved site plan dated January 26, 2018, with an addition of 56 new parking spaces. The overall parking shall not be less than 359 stalls for the entire South Point project. Um, and with this, I'll, I'll turn it over to, to Carlos Nieto, project engineer, to explain the, the changes we're requesting. So good evening, my name is Carlos Nieto. Um, I'm a principal at the Lance, uh, at the Berkshire Design Group in Northampton, Massachusetts. Um, this uh, condition and the changes that we're proposing, uh, first of all, I want to, uh, the first thing is that we're not changing the parking count. Um, the conditions deal with assigning some ADA parking spaces and assigning some um, compact car spaces. Um, the approved plan um, includes uh, the proposed building, the way that it's uh, designed and placed on the site, uh, will remove 17 parking spaces. So starting with, we're removing 17 parking spaces, but that adjacent to that new building, there's gonna be uh, a total of, of uh, 50, uh, 43 new parking spaces. To the north of, of the proposed building, there's a new uh, parking um, area that was also approved, and that area includes 30 parking spaces. So when we do the math, taking out the 17 that we removed and then adding the 43 and the 30 that we added, um, we end up with the count of 56 parking spaces. In the condition number six as proposed, uh, we've kept the number of parking spaces, so we still have 56 parking spaces. We still keep the ADA parking spaces that were uh, included in the um, next to the, the uh, proposed building, what we've, the change here is to add two new ADA parking spaces to the 30 uh, of parking space uh, area. And to be able to provide this new 10 parking spaces, got new ADA parking spaces, these two ADA parking spaces, we've um, used some of these um, compact car spaces to provide enough space within the same area that we had. So we didn't want to add more pavement or add to the footprint that we already had. So in, in a summary, what we're asking on condition number six is to um, the inclusion of two new ADA parking spaces on the 30 uh, parking space area to the north of the new building and the proposal of six marked uh, compact parking spaces. Okay. Thanks, Carlos. Any questions with with the changes being proposed here. If not, I'll, I'll move on um, and feel free to stop me whenever to, if you would like me to come back to any, any um, proposed changes. Condition no, number I, seven. Mr. White, I think we'll probably, you'll have questions at the end of your presentation, but. Okay, um, so, sounds good. We'll just open. proceed and, and, yep. and hit the questions at the end. And if people do have questions, they can ask, but they tend to ask questions at the end of the presentations. Okay, thank you. Condition number seven, all parking areas and driveways shall be constructed meeting the standards found in section seven 
of the general bylaw and be maintained seasonally as needed include surface material, curbing, and painted lines. Uh, no change is requested to this condition. Same with the number eight, the site shall maintain 1.6 parking stalls per unit at all times. Uh, no changes are being requested to this condition. Uh, we're planning on adding the 56 parking spaces as, as conditioned. Condition number nine, all handicapped stalls shall meet applicable code requirements and shall be clearly marked by signage and painted on the paved surface. Uh, no changes are being requested here for condition number nine. Condition number 10, crosswalk shall be provided at the front entrances off of South Point Drive in front of the new building and in front of the new parking lot adjacent to the west side of South Point Drive. Uh, no changes are, are being requested here as well to condition number 10. Condition number 11, uh, benches and bike racks shall be provided in front of the new building and near the playground areas shown on the approved plans, sheet L3 as dated September 13, 2017. And again, I'll pass it over to Carlos to walk us through the proposed, the approved changes, excuse me, the approved plans and the proposed changes for this condition. So um, just to start off with um, on condition 19, um, we are, this is, sorry, this is condition 11. Uh, just to start off with, we're gonna hit this same condition or something related to this condition on condition 19 when we talk about the the movement or moving the playground from one location to another. And that will probably clear up a little bit of the um, of the explanation I'm gonna have now. But um, in simple terms as, and the approved plan in the original location of the playground, um, there was uh, one picnic table and, and then several benches, two benches right next to the area where the picnic table was, and then three benches across um, on the 30, um, Parking stall. And then we had in front of the building, as shown on the lower left corner, we had two other benches and a bike rack. So, and I'm going to just do a total count now. So, approved, we had seven benches in total, one picnic table, and one, and, and the two bike racks. Uh, proposed, um, we are proposing adding three new benches closer to where the new playground area is going to be, and we're going to touch that on condition 19, for having a total of 10 benches. We're also proposing adding one picnic table um, closer to the playground uh, for a total of two picnic tables. And we'll be providing the two bike racks. There's going to be one bike rack. It's, it's not uh, called out in red, but if you look at the proposed uh, playground on the left, <clears throat> on the bottom part, you'll see three lines right at the entrance of the park of the playground. That is the, the those are three bike racks, three bike loops. And um, and so we've we've kept the same number of, of bike racks. So just to summarize, approved, we had seven benches, one picnic table, and one and two bike racks. And in the proposed, we have 10 benches, two picnic tables, and two bike racks. So what we're asking for the additional Great. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, the next condition is condition number 12. Um, the lot shall be approved at no more than 35% lot coverage. Uh, we're not requesting changes to this condition. Um, we, as you'll see, may have noticed in the plans, the lot coverage is at 35.2 percent. Um, if the board feels like this condition needs to be updated to be uh, to have that 35 percent number increased to 35.2, then we would request a change. But if you round down to 35 percent, uh, which is kind of our stance, then we're not requesting any changes to the condition. Condition number 13, all on-site landscaping shall be maintained in perpetuity and the complex shall be cleaned of trash and other discarded material at all times. Uh, when applicant isn't requesting any changes to this condition. Um, planning on continuing to main, maintain landscaping um, and making sure that the property is in good condition. 
Condition number 14, safe site distances shall be properly maintained on the property at the intersection of South Point Drive and East Hadley Road. Uh, no changes to this condition number 14. Condition number 15, all air conditioning units, communication devices, and all other outside mechanical, mechanical equipment shall be placed on the roof of the building and not on exterior walls or within windows. Any equipment that is required to be located on the ground shall be screened from view with plantings such as grasses or shrubs. Uh, no changes requested to this condition as well. Same with condition number 16, all on-site lighting shall be downcast as not to shine on adjacent properties or into the night sky. Applicant uh, plans on complying with, with this condition, no changes requested. Uh, same with condition number 17, the location of lighting fixtures shall be identified on the construction drawing submitted with the building permit. Um, no changes here to this condition. Con condition number 18, the traffic impact study and the stormwater management report shall be reviewed and approved by the town engineer prior to a building permit being issued. Uh, no changes here to condition number 18. Condition number 19 um, is, is a condition we are requesting changes to. Um, the following amendments shall be approved to the specified special permits. Um, ZBA 1968-48 condition number one, that the number of dwelling units to be constructed shall not exceed 47, um, and the entire site shall contain no more than 229 dwelling units. And the strike through that you see there uh, is, is uh, the same as what's listed in, in the special permit showing the amendments that were made. Um, so we're, we're not requesting any changes to this one um, and the others below 71.3 conditions 6 and 16, 87.28 conditions 1 and 11, 94.46 condition number 3. Those were all removed uh, per ZBA 2018-21. Uh, but the condition we are requesting um, changes to and we'll show the changes that are being made is ZBA 94-46. Condition number four, the recreation areas as shown on the plan prepared by Berkshire Design Group shall be maintained in working order at all times. And I'll turn it over to Carlos again to, to share about the proposed uh, changes to um, the uh, landscaping plan. Yeah. So I'm gonna start by, there's a couple of subjects uh, we're going to be talking here. So the first one I'm going to be talking about is about uh, the location, approved location of the playgrounds and of the grills, um, which is what you're seeing right now on your screen. So what you're looking at on the left is the approved location of the playground, which was um, along uh, South uh, South Point Drive um, to the east side of South Point Drive, uh, north of the proposed 30 uh, parking space parking. And then what you were looking at the right was the approved location of, of grills that uh, were approved before uh, with the former owner. And it's showing a scattering of four grills basically on the backs of some of these buildings. And then one of those grills was proposed also next to the playground area. So now moving to the proposed, uh, what we've done is we've moved the uh, playground area from the north, if you look at the proposed on the left uh, image, um, we moved it from the north of the 30 space parking area, which is on the, from the right of that image. And we've moved that to the left on the west side of South Point Drive, um, now serving more centrally to um, more units and also between three apartment uh, buildings that are existing. As part of this, uh, the move of this playground, um, we've also added a lawn area formalized with several benches around, which we talked about on, on, on uh, 11. And uh, we've also added to, to substitute the four grills that were scattered throughout the project. Um, the uh, applicant is proposing to add four grills in two stations that are on the right image that you're seeing, the ones on the red squares, uh, those represent those two outdoor kitchens, if you want to call them, with two, two grills each, each. So for a total of four, four grills. 
Um, we've also included a, a paved area around it. So for the convenience of the people who are using these grills. And again, we um, um, have this uh, more formalized grass or lawn area across from them um, to provide some space for, for after grilling or outdoor activities. Um, on the next slide, we're going to be talking about uh, the other change to this condition is uh, in approved plans, the previous owner had proposed two community gardens. You, uh, you can see in the image here, one of them is in the area of where the new grills or uh, new amended grills that we're proposing. And, and then there was another one right behind one of the uh, buildings to the north, as you can see here. Uh, the applicant at this point is requesting to remove uh, that as part of the condition. So they do not want to um, uh, install these um, community gardens. Um, and the main reason is a management issue where community gardens end up being um, a management nightmare to a certain degree for the management company that's there. And also if people leave or do not stop taking care of their gardens, they become kind of an eyesore. Um, and again, it becomes a maintenance a nightmare. So the applicant at this point, he's requesting to not have to install these two uh, community gardens. And I think, Carlos, it might be helpful if, if Mario shares a little bit from his perspective, kind of from a property management level. Um, you know, we've, uh, our property management group has, you know, manages uh, thousands of units across the United States. We have some um, good experience with working with these community gardens. Mario, would you mind sharing a little bit kind of from our perspective about, and, and, and kind of adding to what Carlos said about kind of our, our feelings towards these gardens. Sure, can everybody hear and see me? Yes. Yep. Very good. My name is Mario Martinez with FPA Multifamily LLC, uh, located in Atlanta, Georgia, though coming to you today from Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, so Tyler is exactly right. We own about 30,000 apartment units all throughout the country. And uh, we've, uh, implemented in the past a few of these community gardens and our experience has been less than fantastic with these community gardens, not upon their initial implementation, but in terms of the upkeep for these, these gardens themselves. I love the idea of them, uh, but the reality is I think a lot of our, our, our tenants uh, usually don't upkeep them or, or maybe one person will. And then trying to find a balance between uh, uh, you know, the folks that want them and the folks that don't and, and the upkeep that, that is associated with them and who is responsible for that uh, typically just ends up creating friction. So, you know, what we've tried to do since our tenure of ownership started in 2021 is embrace and go after those amenities and communal experiences that that the residents really are, are seeking out. And, and really, the short answer is this is not one of them. So, um, that that's that's really the short answer. Great, thank you, Mario. Uh, I think that's it for for the community gardens and for condition number nineteen. So move on to condition number twenty. Full construction drawing shall be prepared and submitted to inspection services with a complete building permit application. Uh, applicant is not requesting any changes to this condition. Condition number 21, um, all site demolition shall follow the approved plans as identified on sheets E2 and E3 of the approved site plans dated January 26, 2018. Uh, we are requesting uh, some uh, modifications to this due to the nature um, of moving the, the playgrounds to a different location, but I'll, I'll pass the baton to Carlos to, to share more about what we're requesting here. Yeah, just uh, exactly what the basic Tyler said, uh, because we're now proposing to move uh, the playgrounds to a different location. There is some demolition that has to happen in this new location. So um, basically the demolitions that we were doing in the original as approved are gonna stay the same for the most part. The parking area for the 30 parking spaces has its own area, which is what you're seeing right now. And then this is the area for where the building is going to be. So the demolitions have not really changed in those two areas. Where we are 
now proposing um, of adding is an aerial demolition for where the uh, um, playground area is and the lawn area is. Um, and I just wanted to make sure um, it's it, it, it's pretty blank here when we were on the site. I want to I, I express this to uh, the two um, members of the board that we're keeping all the trees that are there, the mature trees that are there. We're, there's plenty of grass space to do the work that we need to do around them. Um, and they will provide then, you know, larger uh, scale shape and um, and they will complement, they will be complemented with a number of other tree plantings that we're proposing for this area. Uh, but again, just to summarize, this is uh, uh, a uh, effect of moving the playground from one side to the other. Now we have an area that we were not doing demo before, and now we're going to have some demo in that area. Great. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, moving on to, to condition number 22, the building shall be constructed following the design on sheet A3.0 of the approved plans dated September 13th, 2017. And I'll turn it over to, to David O'Sullivan to share about the requested changes here with respect to uh, the building heights. Okay, um, <clears throat> we, this was the approved plan. Um, we had had pretty much a masonry base with um, siding above, mimicking the other buildings on site. Um, if you go to the next, slide. Um, we're still doing exactly the same thing. Um, we are with the changes we're doing to HVAC systems that we'll get to later um, and the structural system in the building, we wanted to go to wood trusses versus uh, joists because they're superior for construction and easier to do mechanicals and um, easier for sound control. So we're proposing to increase the building height from 28 to 33 feet, which was to get additional height for the um, deeper structure. Um, the, I don't think it will be noticeable on the site. Um, so it's minor change. And then we did redesign a little bit that you'll see later on the interior. So we did change a few windows around the front door and obviously that garage door in the back became windows. So that was the, so there's a height change and there's a um, few minor window door location, relocations. Great. Mr. O'Sullivan, can you describe the exterior of the building? What the material is and, and um, so it's, how it looks, what the, the first floor is versus the, the second and third? So the, the first floor is um, masonry, just like the other existing buildings on site. Mm -hmm. And then the upper two floors will be um, the vinyl siding in the same color scheme as the ones that are existing as part of the overall Amherst Renew, Renew Amherst project. So we're basically matching the existing buildings in character, colors, materials. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, on the condition number 23, an example of the tenant parking sticker and guest placard shall be submitted to inspection services prior to receiving a final certificate of occupancy. Um, this, this is a condition that we're requesting modification of based off uh, property management's experience with the number of parking spots that are available throughout the day on site. Um, we're not opposed to um, having a parking plan in the future um, if needed, especially um, when these when the new 47 unit building is um, constructed. Uh, however, we don't feel like it's a need at, at this time, um, given, given the number of spaces that are available. Um, I'll show some pictures here in a minute and turn it over to Mario to share a little bit more and maybe give an idea of, based off the demographics of the, the population, or the, tenant, the tenant base demographics, why, you know, why the, the, there are a lot of leftover parking spaces. But I just wanted to share some, some photos here that were taken, uh, I guess that's exactly a week ago. Um, 
And as you'll see, um, we took them at two, two times in the day, one at eight and one at 4 p.m., 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. As you'll see in, in both uh, sets of photos, um, there's plenty of, of parking spaces available. Um, and this is consistent with management's report um, throughout all times of the day that there are sufficient number of spaces. Um, therefore, app the applicants requesting that we not re that uh, a parking plan and parking stickers are, are not required at this time, um, but but on an as needed basis um, in the future. Um, I'll turn it over to Mario to kind of share a little bit more perspective from a management point of view on on parking. Yeah, really, I don't, I, I don't think I can say it much more eloquently than Tyler just did. I think this is a problem that, uh, it, or it, it's a, uh, it, it's not a problem that we're trying to solve in this site. We're, the site currently is about 98% uh, occupied. And as you can see from the photos that, that Tyler sent around, they don't have much of a parking issue. Um, and so we think there's sufficient parking for everybody on site. Great, thanks Mario. Uh, we'll move on to uh, condition number 24. Uh, new language shall be added to the management plan and lease agreement, limiting the stay of guests to five days and a maximum of 10 guests per unit, unless otherwise approved by management. Uh, the, the revised management plan and lease agreement shall be submitted prior to receiving a final certificate of occupancy. Uh, we're not requesting any changes to this condition. And in fact, have submitted an updated lease agreement and management plan uh, with this updated language in it. Um, so I have no, no further updates or request uh, to change this condition. Condition number 25, South Point Apartments shall add a weekend security guard when the new building receives 80% occupancy and review of security shall occur at a public meeting within 90 days following one full cycle. Uh, between May 1st and November 1st. This language relating to on-site security shall be added into the revised management plan to be submitted prior to receiving a final certificate of occupancy. Uh, so this condition was approved in, in ZBA 2018-21. Uh, the applicants requesting that this condition is removed altogether. And again, I'll have Mario give some insight here in, in a second. Uh, but uh, at, at, the, at, at the moment, um, and has been our experience since we've closed on the property in March of 2021, there haven't been any safety issues or incidents at the property uh, or noise complaints or safety complaints. Um, as you can see as well on, on the, the incident and noise report provided in the application report. Um, so. Our, our position is that we don't feel like uh, a weekend security guard is, is needed based off uh, the, the safety record that we've had at the property ever since uh, we took ownership. Uh, Mario, anything else you have to add to that? Again, you, I think you, you stated it all pretty eloquently. Much like the parking issue, I think this is a problem or a, an issue we're trying to solve for which there is no, no real problem at this point. Our, our, intention is and has always been to make sure that our residents are safe and secure. Uh, that being said, and we've been uh, very fortunate here during our tenure of ownership, we haven't had any issues uh, and our tenant feels safe and this is not a, an issue that they're coming to us about. Uh, not to say that we wouldn't address it uh, if it ever became an issue, but it just has not been. So, um, great. That. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, Mario. <clears throat> um, Moving on to condition number 26. I'm sorry, could I could I ask a question? I couldn't see how to raise my hand. Oh, sure. Yep. <laughs> on about 25, and I, I'm sure we'll talk more about this, but I just don't, and I know you want to remove this condition, but I do not understand what was, and, and maybe, I don't know, um, what was meant by one full cycle. Full cycle of what? Does anyone well, know I what that means? <laughs> of lease, it was, it was one full cycle of leases, so that it, after approximately a year of, of occupancy, see what it was like, come back and report to the board. 
So first it reaches 80% or the thinking was reach 80%, then wait a year yeah. and then have a, a meeting within 90 days. Of what, yeah, one full cycle, meaning a, sort of a year of occupancy at, in, uh, at 100% or whatever it would be. But, yeah. but it says May 1st to November 1st. So I, I don't know, maybe. Yeah, I don't know what that means either. I, I, you know, I, I can't, okay. I, I don't recall the reason for that, but I do recall the intent was let's get a year a year under our belt with full occupancy and see, and then come back and, t and talk to us about what, uh, is, so needed, that what is, isn't needed. Thank you. So that is a public meeting of the ZBA, not like yes. at the apartments, not run by management or something. Back to no okay, public, public meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on that one? There it is. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> um, moving on to, to um, condition number 26. Uh, any substantial changes to the final approved site plan, requested revised management plan, or the requested revised lease agreement shall return to the Zoning Board of Appeals for additional review at a public meeting. The applicant is not requesting any changes to this condition. However, because this condition addresses changes to the site plan and management plan and lease agreement, we wanted to cover uh, and summarize the, um, the other changes that have been made to the site plan and the building and apartment layouts. So we'll cover that uh, in these slides. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over to David O'Sullivan to kind of give us a, a floor by floor uh, breakdown of, of the building layout changes that are that are being requested. Okay, uh, David O'Sullivan from O'Sullivan Architects again. Um, the major, one of the major changes to the interior is that we had proposed a building with common laundries on each floor. And we are now with this new proposed in the revisions to the building, we're including washer dryers within the units. So our first floor as we came in the lobby before had a vestibule and a small sprinkler room and then laundry and mechanical on the first floor. Um, with this change, we're not needing laundries on every floor because the common laundry can be put to better use for the building residents and we had integrated washer dryers into every unit. So um, we also, we basically kind of shifted the door 90 degrees, uh, gave a larger vestibule and off this vestibule, we have the leasing office um, with a small open area, small office, closed office and a small storage. Um, in the same time, we relocated the elevator a little bit for um, better flow inside the building a little bit. Um, so this was a change to the interior. It doesn't change the outside other than the, as we had stated before, a little bit on the doors, um, doors and window layout on the outside, right around the front door. So, um, and then we had inside the front door before, we just had this basic common space that we had not programmed. Um, and this is off the vestibule. You see the double doors at the top. Um, we now have what we call fitness center that's more appropriate, which is what some of the residents are looking for. Um, it includes a lab, uh, like a lav, includes drinking fountains. And the water room was relocated because there was a conflict with where the sewer was coming in the water. They need to be separated farther out. So the water room got pushed down a little bit. Um, because of site utilities um, and the fitness room was created because of demand by tenants. Um, and that gave them a space um, to, to be right off the front vestibule fitness center that's accessible for not only this building, but other people in other buildings as well. Mr. O'Sullivan, and what's then, a water room? What's a water that's room? That's the sprinkler water meter. Okay. Okay. So it's gauges and meters. Thank you. Yeah. And Mario, would you mind sharing a little bit um, of perspective from, from management side about the change from just a general common space to 
um, a strictly a fitness center and kind of why we feel like that will meet the, the tenant base and tenant demand. Yeah, thanks, Tyler. I think we want to program our spaces so that they have some functionality. Um, idle hands can sometimes do nefarious things. And, uh, and we love giving these spaces use so people will use them in fitness center. This, this is you know, over, over 200 units with these 47 units. Uh, and there's no set fitness center anywhere currently on site. So this is a great amenity that folks are asking us for that we can program in this space. And it, it's a, clearly a, a, an amenity that uh, everybody will enjoy and that they're asking us uh, for now. Great. Thanks, Mario. And now moving upstairs, um, on the second floor, we had a large common laundry mechanical space as approved. Again, we moved the elevator a little bit and we moved the electric room up one level because we, with the leasing office on the first floor, we thought that was important. We electric room does not need accessibility. Um, you know, immediate it's, it's moved upstairs and we created out of the laundry area, a lounge space for residents. Um, and I believe it's about, oops, um, yeah, I thought we had dimensions on it, but I believe it's about 12 by 16 or so, that space. Um, so that's on the second floor. And um, we moved up on the third floor. We also took the mechanical laundry room space and basically created a lounge space for the residents, which is 370 square feet. So this kind of replaces that first floor unprogrammed community room into a more usable lounge space for the residents. So we actually now within the building have three spaces and a leasing office where before we had one unprogrammed space, common laundries and storage, building storage. So um, this is going on to the apartment layouts, which I alluded to. This was the proposed apartment layout, which was kind of based on the old um, similarity to the old plans in the other buildings, um, except it was a two bedroom, two bath, um, L-shaped kitchen. Um, and you can see that layout. We basically have changed that two bedroom, two bath layout to a revised plan here on the next slide. Um, retaining the two bedrooms, retaining the two bathrooms, um, moving around some of the fixtures in the bathrooms for efficiency. We also created a washer dryer closet um, within the unit and we created an HVAC unit closet within the unit. Um, at the same time, changed the kitchen to a little more open with a sink and little bar area. So, um, and moved the closet that was kind of floating in the middle, um, making the space look smaller to the corner over B by the front door. So we really didn't change the storage of the units. We basically just added some amenities within the units and some layout changes to get a little more efficient. Um, so that's the side-by-side -side there if you want. Yeah, this is just a side-by-side -side to so you make it a little easier to, you know, to see. The bedrooms are very similar. The living room's the same basic thing and the kitchen's a little different layout. So. Great, thank you. Uh, the final changes that we wanted to discuss in this condition are the, the updates to the management plan. And I think we've, we've pretty much covered um, all of the uh, um, corresponding changes from the management plan and um, based on um, the corresponding changes in the, in the site plan and the apartment units and the, and the apartment layout, um, but the changes that we made um, on, on those items also call for changes in, in the management plan. So for example, changes that were made were the, you know, the basic property name updated to reflect new ownership. Um, the bedroom count um, as discussed before with, with adding the extra bedroom on that first floor when we're removing the utility closet um, added uh, um, or updated the bedroom count in the management plan. 
Number th uh, the third one, community gardens reflected, um, you know, the, the approved management plan discusses community gardens and the proposed management plan were, were um, submitting for approval uh, removes those any mention of community gardens. Um, parking plan uh, is updated to more as an as needed basis as as discussed before based off of the uh, you know the 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 oversupply of of parking spaces, uh, but that management is willing to to go to a parking plan as needed um, in the future, um, but not necessarily required currently. Um, guest stay limitations, as was covered on a previous condition, management plan was updated to include that language, and the the weekend security guard uh, is requirement in the management plan was was also um, removed. Um, so those are the the changes to the to the management plan that were uh, requested. Uh, going on to condition number 27, new property owners shall return to the ZBA at a public meeting to approve and update the management plan. Applicant is not requesting any changes uh, to this condition. Number 28, revised management plan, parking plan, and stickers and revised lease shall be presented and reviewed within 90 days of the first issuance of a certificate of occupancy. Uh, this condition is very similar to the previous condition regarding parking. Um, in which management is in which we're requesting that um, uh, the parking stickers and the visitor passes and placards are are not required at this time due to the number of available parking spaces on site. Uh, number 29, an approved management plan by the ZBA shall be in place at all times. Uh, we're not requesting any changes to this condition. And finally, condition number 30, uh, the removal of the mansard roof and exterior remodel of all existing buildings shall continue during the construction of the approved building. All building exterior renovations shall be completed prior to receiving a final certificate of occupancy for the new three-story building. Uh, applicant is not requesting any changes to this condition. However, I know that there was uh, a question based off the site visit that took place yesterday about the condition of the roofs and which ones had been updated and which ones had not. Um, Mario, would you mind kind of giving a, a brief summary about what has been done to the roofs um, from the past ownership and, and from our ownership? Yeah, so we, we've replaced about 80% of the roofs in our tenure of ownership since 2021. The ones that we did not replace, we chose not to replace only because they were adequate. They were more than adequate. So the useful life of those roofs uh, still had plenty of time on them. But about 80% of the roofs we have replaced. Thank you. Uh, so that's it for our, our presentation. Uh, we've gone through all of the conditions. I'm happy to, to take any questions uh, from any uh, board member, um, any clarifications. So uh, that's that's the basic presentation. Great. Thank you, Mr. White. Um, I'll start with a few questions um, as I ran through it. One of the things that I'm, I was really optimistic about was the community gardens. So what, what I'm wondering is, um, have the, how have the residents been informed that the community gardens are, was a possibility and, and are no longer, and you're proposing them not to, proposing not to have community gardens. So is this something the residents are aware of on your notice that you posted, which I think is a good thing. I applaud you for that. The notice posting this meet, the meeting was taking place. Was it mentioned? And do residents know that they there was a requirement for community gardens that, that you're asking for those gardens to be removed? Yeah, so I can start and, and, um, and Mario can fill in any gaps. So to answer your question about the notice, the notice did not contain any information um, particular information with respect to community gardens um, and our request for removal of that condition. Um, based off my understanding, I don't, um, it hasn't been publicly announced um, to the residents about the, the changes, um, but, but that's kind of where we stand. Mario, is that, is that accurate? 
Yeah, I think the way that we, we phrase the question a little bit differently, we, we kind of approach all of our assets in, in a very open sense um, is to say that we go through a lot of our, when we're, when we're purchasing an asset, what we'll do is we'll do a lot of um, questionnaires with, with the residents. We'll send it to the owner for, for them to ask. And then when we're on site, we have our management folks also ask, how do you want to use these spaces? And oftentimes how they want to use the spaces are a little different than how we might do it at our home. I've, you know, I've got a, a, a garden at my house in Atlanta. It's great. Uh, what I'd like to do and what our residents want to do are oftentimes two different things. And we have to find the balance between what can be done and what, what we will do to help support and program the spaces in the way that they want. And so the overriding comments that we got back from the residents when we took over the site was, we really like a fitness center because one does not exist. Uh, we'd really like uh, these communal uh, grills. They want to be able to go out and grill. Um, and that's how they wanted to program the space. And so those are the amendments you're seeing today. What's the, what's the management problem with community gardens? I mean, other than, you know, yeah. they, they don't look, they, they may not look nice, but gardens tend to be, I mean, that, that happens with garden. Um, the advantage of a community garden, especially in that area, and for some of your, your clients and your residents, is that it provides, and especially for families, a whole lot of um, good information. It's nutritious. It helps people understand where food comes from. It's cheap for them. Um, it's at least we would endorse this and approve such a, a, this kind of amenity in other um, multifamily buildings in Amherst. Um, and I, I find it an attractive amenity. Um, and so tell me a little more about what, what's the headache that you run into other than you may look like a garden. Oh, those are all fair and valid points. And the reality is we're, we're never quite sure how they're going to be adopted. However, well, all we have is experience and the experience here is 30,000 units. Now, to your point, we don't have experience with 30,000 units in Amherst, right? And how that would be adopted there may be different than how it is uh, adopted in our gardens in California in, in, in when we've attempted to do them there. So to your point, uh, it could be that, you know, this isn't the many that folks don't realize they want, but once they have it, they say, this is really fantastic for all the reasons you laid out. However, in our our, our experiences, well, we love the idea of these things for all the reasons you laid out. Uh, how they're adopted and how they're maintained uh, is, is sometimes less than uh, less than ideal. I'll say it that way. And the last question I have is, um, if you had one community garden, you placed it not where the, um, uh, the open space is meant, is in your new proposed open space, but the uh, farther up, I guess it'd be to the I don't know to the north of the of the uh, of the playground in that open space. Um, what it's easier to it, it, if it didn't work out uh, and the, and it just became a hassle or was unused, it could go back to to lawn real easily. I mean, I think that it wouldn't be hard to transform the garden back into lawn if if um, if it was used and you found that it wasn't um, um, an amenity that people wanted or it was a, some way a problem. However. If they don't have it, they don't know that they're missing it. And so I'm wondering if you would consider thinking about having one of those community gardens starting it off. And if it proves to be a problem or proves to be unused or proves to be too much of a headache for some reason, um, either for security or for because it caused um, disagreements amongst the clients or the residents, um, you could remove it at that point. But I wonder if you would consider the possibility of having a community, at least one community garden available to residents and see what it's like for a year or two, and then we can make a decision. You know, the, let me. Um, I, 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 I very much hear your 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 the concern is not the right word, but I, I understand where your head is at because my head is is very much mm -hmm. in the same place. One of the things that we struggle with that this site actually benefits from uh, that a lot of maybe our our more urban or infill deals don't have. People forget sometimes that. Uh, green open space is an amenity in and of itself. And I think one of the things that people do often is try to over-program spaces. Having you know two young kids, it's really nice to throw a Frisbee in a field. It's really nice to just be able to run around with the dog um, or, or however we want to use those spaces. So uh, I, I, I hear what you're saying. Um, I, I'll just leave it with, with uh, 
I think green space in and of itself is a wonderful thing for people to embrace. And I think that in and of itself is an amenity that we, my, my history has said, uh, don't try and don't try and overcomplicate it. Sometimes just the space is the space and that's okay. Um, but I, I hear your concerns. I'm sensitive to them. Okay. Thank you. But what's the problem with having it for a year or two? And then, um, yeah. if it doesn't work out, taking it away. Not necessarily a problem. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, the second question I have is regarding bike racks. In the management plan, it talks about um, you're going to have two bike, I think it's two bike racks with a total of 20 spaces for those bikes. So 10 per bike rack, if I'm, if I recall, I'm looking for it right now in the management plan, but I think that's what you called for. On the site visit, we observed that the, the one bike rack that was in front of the, the, the if you'll put up, you know, I think it'd be helpful. Um, Maureen, if you'd put up a site plan, an overall site plan that we could point to. Um, for the, there, that's, that's good. So we were by the building, the um, show where the playground's going to be right there. Yep. There was a, there's a bike rack there. It's a six, but it's a six bike rack. So it has three loops, six bikes can fit on that bike rack. There was easily 10 bikes attached to that on top of each other. Um, it was inadequate uh, for the for its use. At the same time, just looking around those those areas, there were numerous apartments that had bikes out in front that were sitting on the on the porches or in the front door, not only in between these three apartments, but you look over to the other apartments and there were also several bikes that were left unattended. Maybe they were locked to doors or I don't know how they were I don't know how they were secured. But there seems to be a greater need for bike racks than um, there are bike racks right now. Um, and so, I number one, I don't think you that the, you have uh, right now ten uh, bike racks that hold ten bikes, uh, and you don't have two of those. So I think you need to. I think you need more bike racks um, for the just by, by observation. Um, and I would guess that as the year goes on, in the winter there'll be less. But in the spring and fall and the summer, people use their bikes a lot, and it's an easy place to use your bikes from uh, where you're located. So I'm wondering if, um, about the need for more bike racks and perhaps having them uh, closer to the buildings, each of the indiv individual buildings, as opposed to having one or two centrally located bike, bike racks for the whole project. Tyler, I can, um, I mean, I can say that there is some room in front of the new building, for instance, for an, another bike rack. So there is definitely room on, on that, uh, on the 47 unit building. Um, and in the regards to, we have a bike rack right now proposed next to the playground, which would mm -hmm. take over that one that we saw when we were in the site visit. Yeah. Um, again, I, I, there is plenty of space in that same location we had next to the playground, which is pretty close to the entrance to that building where we could have another set of bike racks there. It, it, there's definitely the space for it. So, so you don't have, you, in, in the apartments themselves, uh, you don't have a utility room where tenants can put their bikes. So unless they want to have their bikes in their units, which is, can be inconvenient, a lot of times they'll have them parked close. So one of the things that um, you may want to consider it would be having bike racks associated with individual buildings um, so that to the extent that your your residents use bikes and this seemed to be more than I anticipated when I observed the property, that would be an, a good idea to increase the number of bike racks and having one to serve each of the different buildings. I can see, if, you know, it makes sense for the bike rack and the playground that the kids in the neighborhood will come up, they'll drive their bike, they'll go up to, they'll go up to the bike rack lock their bike or put their bike up and play in the playground. That makes sense. That that's, makes sense for that specific location. But there are other bikes, uh, I think there are other bikes, racks needed just for storage overnight or, or when the bike's not in use. I don't, I don't think we'd be opposed to, to adding uh, more bike racks for, to, to handle the, the number of bikes that are on site. So to, to answer your, your question. Thank you. 
Um, and then the last question I had about the amenities is, is on the, the grills. Um, work with me on, on this too. Um, the, when we first approved it, the, the barbecue grills were scattered. The, the thought was more that they be, that no matter what building you're in, you're not far from the barbecue grill. And, um, and so for me, I'm looking at this and saying that if I'm, I'm, I'm cooking up a bunch of hamburgers and I live in one of the far flung um, apartments, they're cold by the time I get them back to my house. If I cook them on, at the uh, a place where your, your, your four grills are now located. In the past, in the previously approved ZBA uh, special permit, we had four uh, set aside throughout the, the project. And so it was easier to use and more likely to be used. I like the idea of the two grills along the the, um, the green space. It's a natural place for people to gather. It makes a lot of sense to me. But in terms of convenience for the the uh, renters, I'm just wondering if, uh, and, and what we had originally approved, I'm wondering about your thought process on that. Can you help me out a little bit with what your thinking is? Mario, would you mind sharing just from a management perspective, why kind of uh, co-locating all of the grills in one space um, is kind of is beneficial mm -hmm. uh, to tenants and and to management. Yeah, this is this is actually really exciting. So, so one of the ways that we're seeing a lot of folks are using these spaces is, is in a much more communal fashion than maybe they they may have used them a few years ago. So, the way that this is spread out, I'm looking at page six of, of, of the of the of the PDF uh, is is you know oftentimes how we're seeing people use these spaces is they want to congregate so they can do uh, not just one thing, but they want to do multiple things, right? They want to, in your example, cook their hamburgers while their kids are on the playground or whatever mm -hmm. it is that they may be doing uh, and, and, and supporting that communal space um, makes it one, not just more, uh, not just a more efficient use of the space, right? Um, but it, it uh, in terms of a management perspective, in terms of if there's any cleanup on the grills or anything that needs to be, but that's, that's almost the least of it really. Really, it's that that's how we're seeing these spaces being used now in that communal sense. Instead of everything being kind of spread out, everybody wants to come together and build that community. And that's what we're really trying to foster here. And on top of that, to, to add to Mario, um, understand the, the convenience of having them, I guess, closer to the actual buildings. Um, in reality, though, um, they're, you know, they're not that far from the, 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 the location that we're proposing in that same open space altogether uh, is really not a far walk. So I think that's that's kind of the, the reasoning behind that went into that too, into, into that thought, that decision. Uh, okay, uh, so it's it's not that it's you're worried about maintenance. That's not a big problem. It's not that they're they're pipe. They're not natural gas that you have to run a pipe through. These are going to be propane, right? Uh, they'd be propane tank Correct. grills. Yeah. So it's that you're trying to foster um, a communal um, barbecue area, and that's what you're looking for. Not that they're you're creating that you you're solving a problem that is that occurs when you have disparate replaced barbecue grills well i don't, I, I wouldn't say that it's that's not part of the problem because that certainly uh it is it is easier from a management perspective to have them in one place um okay. but what you know as mario mentioned the communal the communal aspect is also a factor that went into into this decision so I, I would think say I'll, just one other comment, right. you know, Solomon. I think having them in a communal space also um, is a safer situation. I think where we had them kind of behind buildings or near the corners of buildings and things, you're going to have people hang out at the grill and bother other residents. Versus if you have it in that central area next to a playground and things, it's not going to be as much of a disruption to other people. Um, and from a fire control standpoint, you now have one location, not multiple scattered up against buildings throughout the site. I, I agree with you that it's um, it's easier to, to monitor a fire location. That's absolutely true. I mean, 
you can solve that problem by putting grills farther away from the building. If you have disparately placed grills, you can put them farther away from the building to avoid that. Um, but what you you just substituted that two buildings get all the grilling. Um, everybody grills in front of those two buildings as opposed to each building or having one place and having the, the grill just disturbing one building and only one, one of the four grills. Here we have the four grills always having uh, being in front of the, those two buildings. And so all the disturbance goes to, uh, that, there does, that does occur, goes to those two buildings and isn't distributed. But I, I mean, that's kind of a management question. I'm interested in it. I, I like the amenities. I think it's important for rental property to maintain, uh, to have as much amenities as possible and financially possible because I think that helps people have a sense of, of um, pride and importance in the, in the place they're living. And that's the reason I'm asking these questions. Um, so I appreciate your answer. I may not do the same thing myself, but I appreciate your answer. Um, what's the square footage from the playground you're proposing versus the playground that was approved? It's exactly the same playground unit in itself. And the drop zone um, around it, which is the you know the the safety surface, is going to be the same, basically the same same amount, maybe a little bit more actually on this one. Um, but it does provide a better space around that safety zone and a little larger space than what we had before. Before we were constrained because we had the bus stop and the road really close by. Uh, we're here, we have a little bit more breathing room. Uh, there's better separation from the road. Um, so it's a larger space in general, but the footprint of the play equipment itself is the same as we had before. And the footprint of that safety surface, which is the, you know, the mulch that's gonna be used uh, for safety, that's gonna be the same size as we had before. Uh, what happens now is that we, we just have a better green area around it than we had before. And it does give you the um, increased green space out in front of where the uh, where the the playground was originally approved to be. You have it, a long area for, for throwing frisbees. And, yeah, it was really tight. But again, it, there was a, a you know the former owner wanted things in a different way, you know, and, and we follow what he wanted. But definitely was a much tighter space than than what we have now. Okay. Um, What's the demographics of the of the um, renters? How many families? How many um, uh, four person unrelated tenants do you have? I'm sorry, I, I didn't catch the, the last. So, sure, so, I didn't catch the last part yeah, of your question. How, how many fam How many families? How many families are there? And how many of your uh, tenants for your two bedroom apartments are for um, um, unrelated? probably students but unrelated people oh uh i i would be honest uh i would be shooting a little bit from the hip if i could tell, guess at how many families were on site my guess i don't have the number off the you know uh it, it's let me put it this way it's not a quest as to whether uh i i would guess probably about 20, 25% of folks that are living at the site right now are families, okay? With with, with some level of kids there. Um, I don't know if those 20, 25, I'd say probably, I don't know, maybe 15% or so have, 15 or 20% have kids, okay? And I'd say probably 50-ish percent of the folks there, I would not say they're students, I think they're associated with one university or another. That's not to say that they are students necessarily, they may be educators and they work at one of the local universities. Um, so I, I don't know. I think I did a politician's job of answering your question there, but, uh, <laughs> but I, you know, I, I wouldn't say that to you, um, but, <laughs> but you did do a politician's job because you only came up with 75% when you, when I was looking for 100. So, <laughs> so, so, um, I, you, have a, but, you have a future. You have a future, you have a future yeah. in politics, but um, you know. <laughs> but I'm thinking that oh, we saw the bus. We have three buses that come through there, right, for the uh -huh. for the elementary school, and then we saw the the uh -huh. um, right at eight o'clock when we had our or eight thirty when we had our site visit. There were numerous uh -huh. college students, um, uh -huh. and I'm and I would I, I would be I, I'm surprised you don't know this number, and it would be really helpful if you could 
provide that to us. Sure. Um, and I don't know if you can get it from your um, on-site manager, but yeah. uh, they'd be helpful to know because that does impact how important these amenities are um, and where this where non-family members may gather to, to grill. So families do one thing, they want to watch their kids grill. I see it makes sense. Um, but three 22 year olds may want to, or four 22 year olds may want to be back behind their house to grill. I don't know. You know, so that's, that's part of the reason that um, I'm asking these questions. Yeah. Or George, would, 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 would you mind just, just so that we can provide accurate information, would you summarize exactly what information you'd like us to, to go and find? Just the number of families versus the number of. Perce yep. Percentage of your units that are rented to families and percentage of your units that are rented to, um, two or more unaffi unaffiliated adults. Okay. So I've, I've asked a lot of questions. I want to open it up to other members of the board. I do have some more questions after they're done. So um, who has a question? Who, if anybody has questions? M Ms. Marshall, I see your hand is up. Thank you. Yeah, um, so I guess I'll stick with the outdoor amenities. Um, also, and so I'm going to back up to the community gardens. I have two main questions about that. Um, first, if you, if that condition remained, what it, what is it that is, in fact, would be provided? Is it just here's an area, make a garden, or do you, I don't know, do you? put railroad ties around to define plots. And so, so what would that be if it happened? And, and then secondly, if there is no such condition, can tenants request and get authorization to make a garden of their own somewhere or there would be no opportunity to do that? All right, I think that's another question for you as well. If you wouldn't mind. I think you're on mute. Thank you, Tyler. In terms of, um, in terms, quite candidly, the answer to your second question is easier to answer. It, it is typically we don't uh, allow a lot of these communal spaces to be pre, uh, selectively programmed by our residents because it's very hard to control what it is that they how they end up programming that space and how other residents might feel about a communal space that they feel got taken away from them. Yeah. Uh, if, for example, it's, it's a tough one because you, you may find folks that are in two different camps about how they want to use the space. Someone wants the garden, someone wants to do something else with it, someone wants to do something else with it. And when we run into those situations, typically what our default is, is oftentimes, um, is especially with these fields, again, that is an amenity in and of itself, especially nowadays, it's becoming uh, actually a fairly scarce amenity. People are getting kind of pushed closer together. And so when you have these beautiful fields, like you have it for New Amherst, we try and embrace that. And that's typically how folks are trying to use that. So the answer to your question, your second question quite candidly is, is no, we wouldn't, we would not try to, again, just trying to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. That's not how we, it would create other, it tends to create other sensitivities mm -hmm. uh, within the resident base itself. As to what it could look like if, if uh, it was deemed that those were to be supported, uh, also going to dance a little, I'm, I'm, you guys are going to think I'm running for president by the time this is done. Uh, it, it could look like a variety of things. It could be railroad ties, though I don't think we've actually pre-programmed it. The ones that we have done in the past, it quite candidly has been a few years since we've started. We, we've generally gotten rid of a lot of fire pits. And we've gotten rid of, of a lot of the community gardens. Fire pits tend to be a liability for us yeah. um, and for the residents and the community gardens tend to go unkept. So um, if we were to, to do one, it could look like a, it, it, it could be something like railroad ties boxed in with soil. Um, it could be something different maybe with uh, the brick and mortar. Um, don't have a great answer for you there, but it would be, if we were to do one, it would look great when we put it up. So you, it, it would be a defined space. You would, at a minimum, out, outline the area. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, uh, yes, yes, yeah. yes. Okay, yes, thank you. Um, all right, about the grills, um, I'm, 
I imagine myself trying to cook at two, you know, at one of two grills that are butted up against each other. That seems really crowded. And I wonder why you choose to arrange them that way rather than just for freestanding, like on the Great British Baking Show. You know, it's, since they're since they're not plumbed at all. Tyler, why, why you, jam them together? So if, yeah. if you wanted to go to the details on the sheet that I believe is page 16 of the last page of, of the plans, which has the details on it shows. I do understand what you're saying um, in regards to separating, but they do have enough space. Yes, Wait, it's the last page. <laughs> there we go, you passed it. Oh, not last page because last page of my plans. There we go. If you can zoom to that corner yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. The idea is that if you just had a grill and, and to be honest, what the older owner was thinking of was not this he was thinking of camping grills like <laughs> you know it, yeah. in, the, in the garden so that you have an idea the former owner just wanted something that was easy mm -hmm. in the sense of building so he was thinking of just leaving a space so that's why he chose a garden and that's why he chose the the grills these are much more refined they have a counter space that's my main thing Mm -hmm. I prefer on this types of grills. It's just that it does have a larger counter space and they do have a shared counter space, but it becomes larger than if you just had one of these units, because if not, it would be just a very small little space that you have on the side. And, and is, our, it, is it possible our to rotate one, rotate one so people are not cooking back to back, but on? Yeah, I mean, yes. I, I think what we create, what the way that we, we show these was to, we could make them totally flat. We had one is looking into the green space and the other ones, the other one wasn't. So that there was like, a, when you look at the, so we could, and we didn't want to block the entrance to the green space. Right. So that's why we had them in an L shape. Um, but could they be straight? You know, uh, yes, we, we could definitely make them straight and have two grills next to each other instead of having the corner. And and just to clarify, there are two of these stations, so there's four right. total grills. Four total grills. So what I just want maybe it wasn't clear when I said uh, if you still have them in an L shape to turn one of them 180 degrees. So I get it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, so that's what I meant by that. Now, if these are if tenants are really interested in community grilling, um, the does management need to, I mean, do people need to reserve the time to grill or is this a sign or it's just first come first serve? And is it expected that you cook your food and take it back to your unit or can you just spread out and have, have a party for three hours on this space with your, so how are you gonna manage the demand for these if they're really quite popular? Hey, go ahead, Mario, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I, I think that um, quite honestly, it, it becomes a, a rule of thumb here for us. So we look at roughly doing for about every 100 and 120 folks, what we found is about one grill for that tends to satisfy demand. Um, so in this case, we're looking at putting two grills and that about satisfies the demand for what we've seen in our experience for every about 100, 120 units. Mm -hmm. So I, I think, you know, it, it's... It's a, it's there's a little bit of the art and the science here. You don't want to get into the, into the, 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 uh, the act of trying to over-regulate too much of the use because there, there may be an instance where folks come out there and they say, hey, look, we're having a birthday party and we're going to be here cooking out grills for an hour. And that's okay. But the reality is those instances occur uh, seldom enough where it tends to, if we leave things like that, it tends to pacify residents because they're using the space generally how they want to use it. Um, and, and we just don't find that there's much mm, animosity with this count of about 100, 120 to one uh, in terms of, uh, you know, um, fighting folks for the grills. That being said, this is, you know, more grills than they've got now. So this is, I think they're going to be thrilled with this. Um, but that's, that's generally the answer. My, I think uh, another question about just this area, um, 
I mean, I, I, I assume they're quiet hours for the entire, <laughs> entire complex and maybe they're the same noise, you know, it's the same noise bylaw that applies everywhere else. But I could um, imagine that, you know, people are gonna wanna hang out here and it, does that become a problem for the folks in those uh, three buildings around this sure. space? Yeah, I, I think the answer to that is is that management is is prepared to make sure that noise ordinances and the noise bylaws that have been set forth uh, by the town of Amherst are are followed. Um, and I think I think I, I'm not sure off the top of my head those hours, um, but that's the expectation is that residents will abide by those hours and management will enforce those hours as well. Okay, I have a question about the bike, um, the bike situation. Um, does do tenants or does management consider it a problem that there are bikes unsecured and leaning against walls and you know or lying on the ground in front of the building? Like, is that either a safety concern or, or residents wish they had, were able to lock them up? Um, Any, any yes. thoughts about that? Yes, we, we uh, to to your to your to, to the variety of questions you asked. Yes, it is a safety concern. Yes, we don't like them being up against buildings. Uh, yes, we are supportive of the bike racks. Okay, and I also just by the way I noted the uh, valley. There's a valley. What's it, valley bike? The rental e-bike station there on on the property. So um, I just hope that's getting a lot of use that would <laughs> solve, solve the storage issue too. Yep. Um, that's it for me for now about outdoor amenities. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Parks. Hi, thanks. Um, I, I would say that for me, I, I just wanna talk kind of about the same things. I don't have a problem with not having the community garden there only because I know that often it's one person who kind of does everything. And um, so I think I think the idea of, of having the residents, if, if residents were to come to you and ask for that, it might be nice if you would be open to considering that. But I, I also, I don't know that it needs to be required. If, if I may, Ms. Parks. Uh, yeah. 100 percent it, it's it if there was a clamoring for it from the resident base uh we would do it because happy renters pay rent and that if that's what makes them happy that's it, really the, the the selfish answer writ if, if there was an amenity that they were clamoring for that we could install for them we would always want to pursue it because again we're, our, our job is to create that community for these folks and they decide what that community is and so to the extent that we can foster that, that is absolutely what we want to do. So by no means are we opposed to any of these community gardens. We're just not seeing much of a demand for it uh, from these particular residents. These residents are not me. They're not what I would do with the site. That our, my, this, the, 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 the business person here, my, my job is to figure out what do they want? How can we figure out how to do it? Yeah, and I do think that Amherst is the kind of community that does like community gardens. And we do have, you know, the farmer's market and we do have um, a lot of uh, uh, share, garden shares that we can get. So um, it's just something that that if you get people who are interested, it'd be nice if you're open to that. Um, on the subject of the bike racks, um, I, I support the idea of increasing the number of bike racks, especially um, if you're you know, if there's not room for all the bikes that are there currently. And so I hope you will consider adding more bike racks. And the uh, last question or last idea I have is about the grills. Um, are there picnic tables that are close to grills? Because I know that whenever I go out and grill, it's really nice to have a table to sit down and eat at. Um, and I, 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 you know, I see the grills and I see that there's counter space. Uh, but not everybody can sit on the ground comfortably. Not everybody likes to do that picnic style. So, I, so when you were talking before about having a picnic table, I see the picnic tables are over by the playground. Mm -hmm. um, 
I don't know, would you consider putting a picnic table of some sort uh, near the grills? I, sure. I, I guess, yeah, that's, yeah, that's something we could consider there. I, I will point out there are uh, benches um, in this open space area as well that uh, the thought was to, to use those for, for seating um, for those who might be enjoying their barbecue or watching their children uh, run around um, the, that they could use those benches. But um, if it comes down to it, we wouldn't be opposed to locating um, another uh, picnic table in this area. I, 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 I would support that idea only because when you're eating usually on a paper plate and sitting at a bench, it's, it's not as comfortable. So, you know, in, in the parks around here in Amherst, where there's grills, generally there are picnic tables nearby. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's all I have. Understood. Thank you. And Tyler, just so clarify, just could you shift the image there, there that there are two picnic tables provided right right next to the but it's on the playground area, but we do we do have two of them. Yeah. Just want to make sure. Yeah. I just think it'd be nicer to have one closer to the grill area. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. No, that and I totally agree too. I mean, that's makes sense. Uh, any other questions from members of the board? I'll start again. Um, one of the, this is something you may or may not be aware of, but this um, complex has had um, some history with it prior to your map, your ownership. Um, it started out, if you look at the old um, rental special permits as having lots of amenities, swimming pools, tennis courts, basketball courts, all sorts of things were originally planned. Now that was 60 years ago and, and things change. But um, over time, my understanding of that, of this um, location is that those amenities were, were not maintained, they were not used. There were lots of problems with the residents, a lot of police calls, a lot of noise problems, a lot of party problems. This was a, a pretty frequent place for the police to, to, um, to have to, break up um, parties and deal with problems, quite frankly, a lot of problems in this development. That was before you became owners of it. And so that's not on you, but it is the reason that there was a concern about the police presence. And that's the reason that condition was there. When we, when we looked at this in 2020, you can see that the, the uh, complaints from 16, 17, 18 and 19 were pretty, pretty um, significant. And there were a lot of them. And that's the reason that the uh, the um, the police or the uh, special um, police force, the security guard, was acquired for a year to see if it was still a, a problem or not. Can you tell me, number one, when did you first start managing the property? And from that time, have you had any complaint? You, there's no complaints with the town, but are there any complaints that you've had to deal with as managers since you started to to um, manage the property? Yeah, so we we purchased the site in looking for the exact date just to give you this the very specific date, March twelfth, twenty twenty one, and 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 just to be clear, just to to set the the differentiator here, uh, we we engage an affiliated company called Trinity Property Consultants to to manage these sites as we do for all of our sites across the country. So since then, as you've noted, uh, we haven't had, and I figured that was the the intent of originally why this was put in there because of something that happened at some point many years ago. During our tenure of ownership, we haven't had any issues with any nefarious actors on site of any form. We've been very fortunate in that sense. It also goes down to, I think we've got some great management folks there. Um, and if there were any bad actors that are, were on site, we have removed them very quickly after our, our you know, our, 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 we took over. So, and candidly, we just haven't gotten much feedback either way. I think people generally feel content, they feel safe there, uh, which by the way, a follow up to your question from earlier, because I think it leads into this one, about 35% of the folks at Renew Amherst are families. 35% of the units are rented to families? Yes. Yeah. Which okay. based on my politician's math would mean 65% are not. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Okay. So you took over the property, the actual management of the property or Trinity took over the actual man of the management of the property on in March of 2021, March, March 12th, 2021. Okay. Yeah. So the, so the owners, the ownership and the management, uh, uh, occurred concurrently. Okay. Yes. Got it. And then, so you've not had any, have you, you've not had any complaints that elevated the place where you had to send them to the police, mm -hmm. but you must've had, you must have dealings with, um, tenants where you've either had to evict them, you've had to um, counsel them, you've had to give them warnings. You've got 189 units. I'm, I can't imagine that you've gone 18 months without any problems. But that's what it appears to me from the, from the management plan and from your representation. So uh, what kind of, how do you to, deal with that? Well, ju ju just to back up, because there's I think there's, I want to distinguish between two different things. I, I, I didn't, evictions are uh, in our business, a, a, we deal with it all the time. That being said, because someone is getting evicted does not make them a nefarious actor, right? They could be getting evicted for whatever reason. So I wanna make sure that we distinguish that because I wouldn't count the evictions here in, in that bucket, that those, those situations may happen outside of whether that person is a nefarious actor or not. As it relates to you know how many incidents we've had of, uh, I think what I, maybe I'm misunderstanding your question a little bit. No, what I, I'm not worried about evictions for okay. financial reasons for okay. lack of payment of rent. Yeah. I, yeah. That's not yeah. that's not the problem. The, yeah. What I'm trying to to guess, what I'm trying to understand is it's remarkably clean, and maybe it's great management, but remarkably clean that there's been no police reports. I'm guessing mm -hmm. you're dealing with it on site yourself, right? And you're not going to it's not going to not getting to the level where the police have to be called and brought in. So. How do you deal with a part? How often have you had to deal with noise complaints, uh, keg parties, um, other other kinds of disturbances which are in violation of the lease or 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 cause for a warning or whatever that you have to deal with? And, and, and none of that shows up here on the uh, the property. So I'm wondering how you how you deal with it and how you've been successful in not having any complaints that go to the police since you've been managers. Well, I, I, I don't think it's common. I'd be, I'd be quite frankly very concerned if we were having very, you know, a lot of these, any, any of whatever issues you have when you put 200 folks in a, you know, in a, in a few acres uh, that go to the police. You know, if, if you'd like, what I can do is I can go through our, our we have a, a system that tracks any of those issues. I can go through and see and pull whatever issues we've had. But the, at 60,000 feet, we haven't had any issues be significant enough where it would warrant any additional concern that we would either be light on security, that certainly if any issues needed to go to the police, it's not like we're holding them back, we would let them go there naturally and organically. But there hasn't been any specific issues that that uh, would, would rise to that, uh, that level. That being said, what I'm happy to do is if you'd like, we can go through our records and see, hey, look, over the last, uh, you know, at this point, it'd be close to 18 months, what issues have we had on site? And that I'm happy to share with with you. But you don't have that information for us tonight. I, I don't right. have that information for you tonight. So if, if we, all right. Yes, I'd like to, I'd like to have that information um, to know, but um, it may or may, I'm not going to make that a condition if we approve this tonight, but if we, but if we um, need additional information and we're ready to, to continue this hearing to, for two weeks, I would like that information. All right, so we'll go back. We'll get back to that at the end of the of the meeting, one way or the other. Um, let's see. Lastly, uh, where's the snow? Where do you propose to pile the snow? You've got a lot of um, you've got a lot of space to put it, but and I know the one one of the conditions is that it not obstruct views and you know all that's uh, basic management and safety and it's but it will be a condition of the special permit. Where do you plan to pile the snow um, if you're not taking it off property? Good question. Um, unless unless Mario has a, a direct answer to that, I know that um, we have a third party snow removal contractor, Shumway Services, um, that plows South Point Drive and all of the parking lots. Um, and 
the 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 maintenance staff i mean on top of that the maintenance staff clears all the walkways to the buildings um to the exact location of where they clear that snow um until shumway services arrives um and plows the the streets i'm not exactly sure um but i know that we have a third party and our own management staff. Yeah, no, I know that most most times when we deal with large um, rental properties or large large developments, there's a place where snow is supposed to go in order to avoid runoff to neighbors, and it, the, it's the appropriate designated snow piling area. And I didn't see it on any of the. Uh, and I think that's something we should know is is where the snow goes. I know in Southern California and Atlanta, you don't have this problem. <laughs> or in California, you don't have mm -hmm. it often. We do have it here in Amherst. It's a it's a, it's a real issue, and um, so what, would so, you suggest that that's that that information is added to the management plan? Is that yes, and added on a, a management plan and a site plan where location is identified. Okay. Okay. Not and the problem. last question I have, and I'm sorry to have so many, but. Um, a lot of this came up, we, we haven't had a lot of time to deal with this application, but I was concerned about the town um, engineer's letter to um, the planning director indicating five areas where it looks like deficits for the, um, in the planning. And I know you've seen this, the March 1st letter. Can you run through, have you resolved those issues? If not, what are your plans to resolving the issues? Um, or do you think they're, um, they, they don't need to be resolved? Um, Where do we stand I, on that? I can, I can answer that. Um, the March, just to, again, just to be totally honest, the March uh, letter never, never got to us. So we, we received that letter basically like yesterday. Oh, okay. Um, we had contacted Jason Skills when the project got submitted because just as good policy in our office, we like to follow up on the submissions because we don't want them to just go through the cracks. So we had sent them an email and sent them a link for copies of the plans and report just to make sure that he had those. Um, and we have emails on that correspondence going back and forth. Um, but once he, he reviewed them, that, that comment letter never, never got to us until yesterday. Um, that said, we were really concerned that, that it, that we hadn't seen this and we mm -hmm. sent out our my partner uh chris chamberlain the other principal in the office civil engineer and he went out today uh with another set of copies of plans and went to jason's uh, office to discuss uh the questions that he had and our understanding is that those questions were answered um on that meeting uh, there are some things that he wants to see it seems like they're all construction some construction details on the water part of things um, um, water distribution, but there were more technical details that can be handled uh, before uh, submittal of uh, construction documents uh, for building. And then the question that he had in regards to the stormwater system also was meaning we, he had received a uh, revised uh, report, but he, not, he never had received the revised drawings, which he re received today. Um, we assumed that he had received those, but he had not. Um, so after the conversation Chris Chamberlain had with Jason, he was going to re-review that. I believe that things are going to be, um, that Jason's going to be okay with everything as far as I understand, but I can't talk to him. and He's not in the meeting today, so I, I can't talk for him. Uh, but so, yes, he went down there today because we received these comments, the March comments yesterday. And we were very concerned that we had not seen those. So we went directly to him um, and dropped off a set of plans and tried to answer as many questions as we could. Maureen, have you had, or, or Dave, have you had any um, contact with Jason after, Mr. Skeels after the uh, um, meeting with uh, Carlos and Berkshire? Uh, no, I have not. Okay. Nor have I. Um, okay, well, some of these are, you know, pretty basic, but some of these are, could be done easily, um, like putting the, wa the water main on the drawings and some of those, but they're also, 
Uh, looks like there's valves that have been paved over. Um, and I don't, I need to know more about the stormwater. I mean, we talked about it a little bit at the site visit, but uh, we'd have to have Mr. S um, you know, the town engineer has to approve this because uh, we don't hold this expertise um, internally to the ZBA. So these are, these are is something that uh, I, I'm, I apologize. It's regrettable that you did not have the information beforehand, but this is something that probably uh, needs to be resolved before approval of the of the special permit, uh, I think. Um, um, aside Chair, from, uh, yes. Um, I did talk to the building commissioner about this today and he feels that, you know, as long as the layout of, you know, of what's included on the site plan, like the building and the parking and driveway, et cetera, et cetera, as long as those elements are not shifting or being relocated, he feels that, that um, you know, what, what uh, Tyler and his team um, are um, communicating with our town engineer is fine and that, um, and that that could be done outside of the the ZBA jurisdiction. However, if if uh, the site plan, like the building or parking area, something is going to be shifted, that would cause that the site plan be um, uh, to be revised. You know, um, if it's uh, that could trigger uh, if it's de minimis uh, small change, maybe um, the board could review it at a public meeting. If there's a substantial change. Um, that that would be a, another public hearing, but um, it it's, it does sound like um, th uh, the, uh, nothing. Um, um, it sounds like the way that Carlos is working with the town engineer is, is acceptable and, and does not need to have the board uh, review or approval, because there is uh, existing condition that says something on the lines that um, the stormwater report needs to be reviewed and approved by the town engineer before the issuance of the building permit. It does not say to be reviewed and approved by the ZBA. So they, they are going through the proper uh, process. And, and to be clear, we don't foresee any of these comments creating changes to the site plan. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, I wanted, wanted to follow up, if you'll allow me, um, Mr. Judge, on, on one of the comments or one of the requests that you had from us in terms of any major issues that we've had on site that would warrant, you know, some level of notification. We've had one um, over the last, you know, 18 months. And that one event was a broken window as a result of an overzealous teenager uh, hitting a baseball uh, through a window. And that's the extent of what we had. That's the, the only, the, the only um, sort of di disciplinary or um, uh, disturbance outside that you had of, is that. Out, uh, outside of maybe uh, any noise complaints, which we typically don't, don't uh, Noise complaints related to maybe someone jumping on a floor or something like that, uh, you know, above another resident or something like that. That is, that is all that we've had on the site. If you would, if you had noise complaints because of parties or other things, that would be something that, that relates to me today. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Okay. So kids with baseball is the is the <laughs> is the threat that you have, and not um, loud parties from neighbors. I've been very fortunate. Okay. Um, do other people have questions? Uh, I think Sarah Marshall is raising her oh, hand. Oh, yes, Ms. Marshall. Thank you. I, sure, I have a bunch. So, um, so just to, on the noise complaints, it, it seems it's very, I, I find it very odd that the noise, these recorded listed noise complaints just stop in June 2019 and that there has been nothing since. And I know you're, you're not responsible for any of the record keeping or, or you know, behaviors before you purchase the place, but the pandemic started you know, eight months after this final noise complaint. And the town, like every town, um, I think had a lot of trouble with 
um, folks who were tired of being cooped up or or and not social and not allowed to socialize or or wanted to be outside and not cooped up with other people that there was um, at least our town parks and recreation facilities were very heavily used. So it's just surprising to me that a place with so many people and so much outdoor space would not have had any recorded complaints during the pandemic. So I just wonder if you know or could check with the police department that their database is up to date and if that there had been any complaints subsequent to June 8th, 2019, they would be listed here. I mean, I, I wonder if they're just, they haven't entered their data or something or. Can, so, can I ask, yeah. ask you a question to Maureen? Yeah. Maureen, how are, how are the, um, the noise complaints that are that show up on the the, the town's uh, public reporting system generated. Is there some sort of interface with the police department? Yeah, maybe Dave Wiskevitz could better answer this. But um, so the the, um, the complaints that are listed in your project application report are found on our GIS program. Um, and so I believe those are complaints filed with inspection services and not um, and um, not uh, I, I'm not sure if if uh, police uh, um, uh, police complaints are filed there as well. Oh, I thought these were police complaints. So we don't um, have no data on police call because there was talk earlier about, Mr. Judge mentioned how, yep. yeah. So, yeah, I, I we in fact it. don't have that data. It looks like I mean, there's there are summons arrests listed. So, I was, yeah, police. Some are no, yeah, some are police. But we could certainly, um, I could uh, reach out to our police department and confirm that these are the most up to date um, recorded um, uh, complaints, as well as with inspection services. Yeah, again, um, not not that the applicant now is responsible for what happened before they acquired the property, but uh, it just makes me a little suspicious of this, this database. Um, so I would be interested in that. And can you, uh, I think it is the case, so correct me if I'm wrong, that there's no management presence um, week at week weekends or weekday evenings, is that correct? Uh, that is partially correct. That's <clears throat> it's partially correct in, in the sense that there is always a management presence on on call from a facilities perspective. Is to say, if a resident has a an appliance that goes down or a uh, heating and cooling isn't working, uh, there's always someone on call to address that. What may not be on site is the other side, which is the the leasing side of it. There may not be especially now, I mean, the, the building is about 98, 99. For the, quite frankly, there's just not that many units to lease here. So it doesn't yeah. require a mm -hmm. body to be there on the weekends. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Um, so parking, uh, it, it, it's, it seems like there's plenty of parking, um, but you are putting in um, a new lot and new spaces and Perhaps the town doesn't yet require this, but have you considered put in any charging stations for electric vehicles, either for, for management's own use or for tenant use? Um, or, or have you asked tenants and that's not something that is of interest to them? Yeah, it's, it's funny you bring that up because that's been a topic of conversation for us over the last month. Um, we are actively engaged with speaking with our property management teams and then with our residents to, to start to facilitate feedback on that. I'm, I'm a big fan of those charging stations where they are going to be adopted. And the feedback I've gotten so far from Amherst, though we have not made a final decision on what we're gonna do with this site specifically. What we're finding now is there's much more demand in urban infill deals than we are seeing on some of these deals. That being said, I'm gonna reserve uh, judgment on what we ultimately end up doing. We're trying to think, quite frankly, we're trying to figure out how to deal with it from a management perspective, because I think um, I, I very much buy into that philosophy. I have an electric car myself. I 
I really want to figure out how to support it. But again, I've kind of got to meet the tenants where they are. Um, and so if there's not much use for it, then so be it. Then at some point we'll evaluate it. So right. I think we're evaluating that actively and, and making sure that we accommodate the, the sites because I think that's a real value add. I know me, if I was a tenant I, and I had an electric car, I would really want to want to do that. Um, but, so you know, it become, so, we, yes, ma'am. Um, I mean, it comes, it, it, go ahead. Just to let you know, um, in the new building, we have some provision in the electric loads to put in, I can't remember how many, but there is provision near the new building that they can be added. In other words, we figured it into the load for the building. The load of the okay, building. that's great. That was my question. Yeah. Like, yeah, will it be more difficult to install that infrastructure later if, if it isn't considered? I, we did we did discuss it with the engineer and we did put something in. I just can't remember off the top of my head how many we were going to accommodate. Okay. All right. Um, so the, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm, sorry. I'm losing my, my microphone. Go ahead, Ms. Marshall. Oh, thank you. All right. A uh, question about affordable units um, or really any all of the units. Um, are they also or are some accessible, wheelchair accessible, um, that requires or might require different doorway widths or, you know, so, putting appliances at different heights, something like that. So let me tell you, um, be in this building, um, by building code, 5% must be wheelchair fully accessible under the building code. Mm -hmm. um, because it's an elevator building, all 47 units must be what is called an adaptable unit for handicapped. So the new building will have every unit adaptable for handicapped, which is enough that you can, you know, get through any doorway with a wheelchair, et cetera, and there's space for maneuvering, maybe not fully turning in kitchen appliances and stuff, but right. there are five percent. You can visit the person. Well, you can you visit, you can use the you can use the toilet, you can use the shower, but oh, okay. yeah. Um, and then that's all 47, but 5% of them are fully um, the full access handicapped units. Okay, super. Um, another, uh, some other questions about the interiors are, is management going to equip the fitness center or that's just a space where tenants can bring their own equipment? We would, we would, we would facilitate the equipment. No, we would buy the equipment. We would furnish it, be top tier equipment like we have at all of our sites. Oh, okay, wonderful. <laughs> and then, did I? I think I heard uh, that each unit has its own HVAC system. Does that mean there are heat pumps for every unit, and they're all on the roof or something? Yes, there are. Um... Every unit has a air handler within the unit and it's electric heat pump and there are condensers on the roof. Okay. The and, they, and they each have their own hot water heater. I think I saw. Yes, yes. It. All right. Um, and one thing about the landscaping, I, I don't think it's built into our zoning, by, zoning bylaw, but I would hope it's good practice that any um, plants you plant, are not on the state's list of uh, invasive species? None of them for sure are invasive species. That, that's no, no burning bushes. <laughs> no, no burning bushes, no, uh, you know, no, no, uh, hem, uh, no way maples, no, 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 no. Yeah. All right, that's it for me for now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it looks like Steve Judd. Oh, no, sorry. I, I thought you left the meeting. For, I thought you uh, had internet issues. Sorry. No, I did have, I had um, earphone issues, which I, but I figured out how to get a mic if you can hear me now. Um, yep. All right. So if there's no further questions um, at this time, it's time for a public comment. If people, members of the public wish to comment on this application, uh, so indicate by um, 
raising your hand and Maureen, do we have anybody um, in the queue? Not yet. And um, if you're calling in, I need to just to verify. If you're calling in, you would press, um, what would you do? You would press a star nine if you would like to speak, if you're calling in from a phone. No, no one's um, indicating that they would like to speak. Okay. Um, last week we took a three minute break right around eight o'clock. Um, I think I'm gonna use the chairman's prerogative to uh, have, give us another three minute break and then we'll come back and go through conditions and findings. And if there's any further questions that we have before we, when we go into the public meeting portion of the meeting. All right, let's all be back in about three minutes, about 8.15. Thank you.
All right, I think we are back. Everybody back? Yes, sir. All right. Um, now we will move to the public meeting portion of the, uh, the meeting. This is a time when the board uh, has an opportunity to discuss amongst themselves their um, feelings about the, the application. Uh, it's where we look at conditions and, and we make findings and where um, we um, come to a conclusion on the application. Um, it's not typically a time for public or applicant comments, but if we need information, we will seek it from you. Um, and uh, and if, if it's helpful to our deliberation, we welcome comments, but we will seek those out. And if you feel something is important, please raise your hand and we'll determine if it makes sense to have uh, additional comment from the not apart from the board members. Um, I want to say that it, that the way I want to, first of all, I think we should get a feeling about whether we're ready to make the, uh, make a decision tonight on this, or if the additional information that are going to be provided, such as, um, the number of, of, uh, possible EV, um, how large, uh, how many EV stations could be, uh, created by the additional load for the new building, what the police record or the complaint record has been, other kinds of things that are there. Uh, if we want to wait for two weeks and get that information and on, if we need more information on, um, on anything that we've talked about tonight, uh, we can wait then. Um, but if we're going to do it tonight, we do have a, a rather long process just because of the complicated nature of this application. What I intend to do, um, and I think the best way to do this is to go through the conditions proposed by the staff um, first, the possible conditions, and almost all of those are, and many of those are, are just transferred from the old app, the old uh, special permit applications and approved special permits, and run through each of these conditions, and then go back and do our findings, and then make a decision. That will take some time uh, to do it, and I don't think we'll be done by nine o'clock tonight. Um, but we could probably get through that. But we, if, if people are ready, but I also know that this. Um, material came to us late and we may not, you may not have had enough time to review this material. I mean, I've had two days to really look at this and I still have some questions and it's not pejorative to the, to the application. It's just, there's a lot to look at and, and it's a complicated because we're moving, we're really taking seven or eight out with special permits, combining them all in one and which makes sense. It's the right thing to do, make it simple and easy, but it may, you may not be ready to, to move at this point. And if you aren't, we can ask for additional information and, and, uh, and continue this meeting for two weeks. So I'd like to hear what board members are thinking about this and where they'd like to go. My inclination is to is to start the process, but to to wait for um, two weeks and finish it up then. But if we're all ready to wait to go to nine thirty or so or ten, I'm ready to do that. Ms. Pollock. Oh, I just wanted to review the items that um, board members have requested. So. Um, additional bike racks proposed for each building um, to be shown on the site plan, um, verifying the, um, the demographics of tenants at the property, uh, families uh, versus uh, non-unrelated tenants. Um, uh, up, I would say uh, updating the management plan regarding the quiet hours related to the grill um, it, um, as it relates to either the applicants um, sort of hours that they wish or uh, that references the town noise or ordinance and um, updating the site plan to show us uh, picnic tables by the, the grills. Uh, and then if you are going to um, change the orientation of the grills that should be shown um, and if there's any uh, trash bins and recycling that's going to be by the grills that should be shown on the site plan. And um, I can work with uh, town staff about getting a list of um, town of Amherst file complaints. And um, I believe Mario had said that he would, he has a list of complaints that are internally filed with, with, um, with uh, the owner. So if we could have that 
uh, submitted for the record and then update the site plan showing the snow pile areas and then uh, have that described in an updated management plan. And then um, uh, if there's gonna be any um, proposed EV charging stations or EV ready spaces um, for um, either of the lots, I think that is, uh, Dave Boskevitz probably could chime in. Uh, it is uh, a requirement under the, Ener the state energy code to make at least a few of the spaces for both those new parking lots to be EV ready. Um, so, um, so you have the 43 parking space lot and then the 30 space parking lot. So, um, the board might be interested in knowing that, that, you know, the, 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 the 30 space parking lot has, um, enough room for making that EV ready and, and all that kind of stuff. So it, what's the state, there's a state requirement, Maureen, for availability of this, or is, is this just, uh, yeah, um, it is, um, I can pull it up. EV. It's part of the stretch energy code, or that's EV. only the for the building. Uh, no, it's for parking spaces for multi-use, um, multi-use family developments. Uh, EV. Uh, Dave, are you, are you here? Sorry, I'm not, I'm not looking at my screen because I'm trying to look this up. No, I'm still here. It's an amendment to the energy code. Uh, I can't tell you how many offhand right now without looking it up. Yeah. But it needs to be EV ready. With a conduit and uh, one other thing. Yeah, a place for the circuit breakers. Yeah, the circuit breakers. So, all right. So there's a requirement for some of that to be done for a project of this size. Mm -hmm. Some number, okay. Correct. Um, that's, thank you, that's a good list. I think that's pretty comprehensive of the things that we were interested in, in hearing. What are people's uh, thoughts on continuing tonight, trying to finish this, or do, should, do you want to get this information and have more time to, to review the, the documents than, than you have? Go, Mr. Maxfield. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking to, uh, I, I would like some more time to review the documents. I know I've had a, a hectic week this past week. I really wasn't able to sit down and read any of this until, uh, until this morning. Um, and I, Thought I had a good grip on it until I was hearing some of the, the the questions that were being asked by other board members. I'm like, oh, I uh, I probably should have noticed that a little bit as well. So before we get into conditions, I'd really like some time personally to to go through and really read these conditions again, see if there's anything that uh, should be added into them, or um, if I like I like the ones that have been put in there. So that's that's my take. Great, Mr. Gilbert, do you have a feeling about this? Looks like we're at three. At this point, um, who would? All right, I'm think. I think there's two. Uh, excuse me, not three. Two so far that expressed a desire to continue. Yeah, to uh, Mr. Chair, I you know I'd appreciate um, either continuing this in two weeks to to finalize it, or spending you know the next 35 minutes to go over some of the main points that you know Maureen just highlighted that you know other board members had had questions on um, and and comments about. So, you know, perhaps we approach it that way um, and or do the opposite, right? We could we could also do some of the layup um, conditions, right, that that there are no issues on and then give us two weeks to review, um, you know, some of these other ones with, with a little bit more detail. That, that would be my recommendation. Something we could do. Ms. Parks or Ms. Marshall, do you have a feeling? Well, I know how much I, time I spent on this. I, I certainly hope the other board members can have the same amount of time. So I'm certainly happy to wait. Um, but if there is some low hanging fruit we can pluck tonight, that would be fine also. Yep. And I'm, com I'm comfortable with waiting. Um, I didn't have a chance to uh, go to the site visit i might um i might want to go by yeah um, i think it's helpful to see the in this case it's helpful to see the property because you bet it, it, these are hard to it's hard to visualize this uh, if you haven't been on and walked the site and i think you did you were on the panel before but um that was a couple of, it was a while ago and it's helpful 
Uh, well, I think Mr. Gilbert's suggestion is smart. Uh, there are a few things that we can get out of the way, which are some low hanging fruit. Uh, and then based upon some of the, the information we gather, um, and we can then reconvene, we can uh, continue this till the next meeting and we can go through the other, the, the other conditions and the findings. So, um, I think what I'm going to do, Maureen, is go through your um, proposed conditions that the staff suggested and, um, and just and circle the ones that we think are low hanging fruit. And if anybody has an objection to them, please raise it and we will not include this in the approved conditions, um, the first set of approved conditions. And we'll come back and do all the rest of it later on uh, in, two, in two weeks. I can pull that up um, so everyone can look at the same. So I'm, I'm on page 21 of 23. I've got which document? Because I've got 27 pages. Yeah, well, I'm on the document of updated September 8th, 2020, and I'm on page 21 of 33 pages. So do you have... You have the September 6th project application report before you, I think, Ms. Marshall. Then, if you have Okay, and I found this other one on my porch today, so thank you, uh, whoever dropped, dropped it off. That's, 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 <laughs> the, that's the in-person service we get from our staff. Uh, Ms. Pollock uses it as a way to get exercise, I think. Oh, yeah. All right, and, well, tell and, me again what page. Oh, so um, uh, 22. Right, drops it around town to all of us. That's very helpful. All right. So on page 21 of page of 33 pages, 21. Uh, project one, um, uh, condition one, excuse me, um, is needed. So, and it's, it's what we're gonna do. We're gonna replace all the conditions and start a new one. So that one seems to me to be low hanging fruit. Um, project two, uh, excuse me, condition two is gonna depend upon a lot of the things that we're asking about are going to be in the plan, so I don't want to do the plans right now. That This is standard that we'll always have built and maintained according to approved plans, but we're going to have new plans, and so let's, or at least some new information, let's not do that. Number three, I think, is straightforward. I don't know if anybody has an objection to the uh, conversion of the workspace into another unit. Um, we give one more unit of housing and one less unit of, of management, I think. I didn't hear anybody complain about that. So that seems, unless there's a complaint about another unit, I think we could have, that's one that we could approve. The total number of units found on site. Um, I don't think there's a issue with the total number of units because that's just a wait, change. Wait, sorry. Yep, Ms. Marshall. Change the name. Oh yeah, thank you. And it happens in at least one more condition further on. So you just search and repeat. Yeah. So number four, I think, uh, again, it's a function of the approval of the additional unit. Um, the next one deals with the, the higher level of the higher building from 28 to 33 feet. Um, does anybody have concern about the change in plans for that? I do not. I don't have a concern, but is it, because I'm new at this, um, is it clear to to knowing if you're in compliance. I mean, what if the building's on the slope? Where is Where do you measure the grade? Where do you start measuring? It's yeah. the midpoint, of, uh, it's the, uh, the average grade, wait, uh, it's the midpoint of the uh, roof uh, <laughs> measured, or uh, in this case, it's a flat roof, but it's measured from the, from the side of the building um, from the road. Okay, so there's there's a protocol for how. Yeah, there's a, there's a specific standard. section 6.7, uh, 6.17 of the bylaw that outlines um, the specific sort of um, way they would measure it. And then it is indicated on their uh, submitted um, building elevations. And then, you know, when they go for their building permit and their, um, their uh, CO to um, actually have tenants live there, that, that all these things would again be confirmed. Um, number six deals with 
requirement for registration and permitting under the Amherst residential property laws. That's standard. No, uh, no more than four. Number seven is no more than four unrelated individuals. That's standard. The street numbers um, being clearly marked with reflective signage uh, and, and observable from both directions is standard. I don't think any, there's any objections to that. If there is, please speak up. Uh, marketing and leasing. Leases shall be a minimum duration of 12 months. There's nine. Number 10, all dwelling units shall be rented by unit and not by bed. That's standard again. Any short-term rental of any residential unit shall be in accordance with all local regulations. It almost seems like it doesn't need to be said, but you can't rent. <laughs> you have to rent according to the laws. It's that shouldn't be that shouldn't be controversial, Mr. Judge. Yes, Ms. Marshall. Yes, you need to replace uh, of after the word accordance with with. Yeah, thank you. Number twelve lease agreement shall specify um, specifically prohibit trespassing on adjacent properties and shall outline enforcement actions. That was from earlier, I think, don't think that's a problem. Substantial modification, um, which may impact tenants oversight determined by the building commissioner, specifically excluding minor updates such as pricing, gate modification, uh, clerical errors, like this is standard um, flexibility given to the building commissioner to approve um, um, minor changes if, if, if it is substantial and he finds it substantial, it comes back to a, a public meeting. Affordable units, six dwelling units um, is what's required. I have a question. Sorry, I had to slow you down. Um, I was confused about this six dwelling units. Is this in the entire complex or just in this new building? This is in this new building. <laughs> okay, because okay, this I'm is correct. replacing all the other permits, so. No, sure. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Oh, but you know that's a good clarifying question. We could say yeah. a minimum of six dwelling units shall be provided. Mm -hmm. uh, I can play with the language, but provide uh, in, in the, the forty-seven 47 unit building. Building. So many of those buildings were built before there was the um, affordability requirements, so it doesn't apply to those. Okay. Yep. But that's a good catch. Good question. Affordable units uh, fifteen. Is there? A, that's one. I do have to ask uh, the architect, Mr. O'Sullivan, is there a mix of affordable units? What there are, are they all four bed or all two bedroom? There are two to three bedrooms in the building. Yeah. Two the rest three. are all, all um three bed. There's oh. so there's forty five two bedrooms and two three bedrooms. And are the two three bedrooms going to be affordable? That would be the management's question. <laughs> so we want to describe what belt, what um, layout is going to be affordable. Will the three bedrooms be a, the two three bedrooms be affordable, or will only two bedrooms be uh, units be affordable? And I, Mr. White or Mr. Martinez, can you see what your thinking is? Um. <laughs> I would think typically where we have the more uh, the higher demand is in the two bedrooms. I would think the two bedrooms would be the affordable ones. Yeah, that would, uh, that would, that you would, have, that would be my inclination as well. That'd be all six. And would you have? But I was wondering if you had one for family, one affordable for families. Um, three bedrooms tend to be a family um, more so than foreign related individuals. Um, would you object to? three, uh, five affordable units being two bedrooms and one affordable unit being three bedroom? No, sir. Okay. So five and one. Is there any objection from board members to that? Uh, Mr. Chair? Yep. Yes, I, Mr. Maxwell. I, 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 my preference would be that, that both the three bedrooms would be affordable units, as I think we mentioned. Uh, those typically are for families and you would still end up with four two bedrooms. Uh, and I think we would still end up with a uh, ultimately a very uh, uh, profitable venture here for the uh, the applicant, even with both the three bedrooms being affordable. 
Yeah. So my only comment to that to make you aware of, because usually when you're doing affordable units, you split, spread them around the building, don't stack them. The three bedrooms are right above the front door, the two, three bedrooms. It's, I just want to make you aware of it. It's not an issue as far as anything else. Just, Oh, so you're, Mr. Sullivan, what you're saying is that what we, we require that they be spread out and diverse and spread out through the building and that they not be all located together. And what you're yeah. saying is that you'd have, yeah. in this case, you'd have two of the units close to each other, but the rest of the units but could be any place. Be on adjacent floors. It would be a second floor unit, a third floor okay. unit stacked above each other. That's all. Yeah, I don't think that's in any way, if that would happen, I don't think that violates the intent of the dispersal requirement. In the, Making, I know it would for the... HCD, but you have your own local. I just want to make you aware of it. That's all. Uh, well, maybe uh, that's something um, for the next meeting that we should, uh, if you could um, highlight in the floor plan, which ones would be affordable because they should be uh, dispersed throughout the building. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that is, I believe, one of the um, uh, possible condition number 17 gets into this very topic actually uh, being dispersed throughout the development mm -hmm. and shall be com uh, comparable to the market rate units in terms of the equity of design materials in general. Okay, this is slightly different, but but uh, but that first part uh, should be dispersed throughout the development. So perhaps um, we should uh, look at look at floor plan to make sure that we, we, and we often we can do we can work with the owner and provide a diagram. Okay, great. And, and, and if, if we're we doing can... two, three bedrooms, it's they're going to just be on the same location on the floor plan, just separate floors. If if we could voice our opinion too in terms of the mix of the affordable, our preference would be the five and the one. Um, there are there are affordable options in the other units on site. Um, also, if you if you require that both of the three bedrooms are affordable, there's going to be a lot of folks who don't qualify to rent that unit because they're out of the, the income bracket. Um, and so I think there's a lot of folks who would want to rent that, but won't be able to because it's strictly affordable. So if we do, if we do have a, if we do have a, a, in a, a voice in the matter, our, our preference would be five and one. I am, you know, I'm, I'm inclined to like Dylan's Mr. Maxfield's suggestion. One possibility we can think about um, would be that you come back to us if you cannot rent that out. If you if that's indeed a problem, um, you can come back to us at a public meeting, um, and we could change the requirements. Another another possibility of, of how to resolve this um, condition, but we're not going to resolve the condition tonight. So that's something for the board to think about. But there's clearly is needs in, in Amherst for affordable units for families larger than two kids. So um, let's, let's leave 15 as it is with a notice that we're going to, um, there's an inclination to allocate some of the three bedrooms and perhaps have come back to the, the board. Um, we can, but, we and, could probably give you two options for floor plans to submit to so that we have the five and one option and the four and two option. That would be great. We'd appreciate that. Oh, and Mr. Maureen, Chair. You know, Yep. Yeah. Um, so similar to a, 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 another residential development that the board uh, reviewed and um, on sunset, um, our senior planner and housing housing planner Nate Malloy um, provided um, comments uh, related to um, about this topic. Um, so he uh, he works closely with the Amherst Housing Affordable Housing Trust. Who has a, you know, uh, a real sense of what the of what the um, need is here, uh, physically in Amherst of what of affordable units by bedroom count. So the board may wish to seek a comment from from Nate Malloy. Yeah, that'd be helpful to know what the need is. All right, so Mr. That's, that's something we can get from the um, from the staff and have that ready in two weeks. Can I ask? Uh, hold on, Mrs. Marshall, just a second. So yep. the, put that on a list of things to get. Um, and I'm not going to, I don't think we're ready to move on 15. Uh, that's my call. Um, Ms. Marshall, go ahead. Yes, I think that applicant, um, maybe Mr. White, uh, said a couple minutes ago that there are other affordable units in other buildings. So it might be helpful to us to know the mix of 
bedroom, how many bedrooms are, you know, I, what, I, I don't know the right way to say it. The mix, the mix of affordable um, units elsewhere on the property. On the property. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Okay. Number 16. Um, that's the definition that's affordable. We'll, we'll leave that up to when we do the affordable housing. All the, the, the 16 is a slam dunk. That's just what it is. So I, I think we can approve 16. Um, 17 isn't a question of um, affordable units. It's a requirement that they be dispersed. That's a, actually, I don't think we have any choice on that. We should approve 17. 18, applicants shall submit a local action plan. That's how you're going to, you need to do that to just to um, rent. You have to go through this process to rent the affordable units. That isn't a, a question. 19 isn't a question either. I don't think that is a question. Boilerplate 20, the same thing. Support boilerplate and a requirement of the program. 21. Is a requirement of the program 22 is um, local preference of 70 percent of affordable units that's standard uh, 23 shall be identified uh, again that's standard 24 of affordable units designated prior to the issue of a building permit um, that will be done registered deeds okay so that'll be done 24 is pretty standard um, 25 is the affordable units shall be available in tenants that shall be in process at the time of any full or partial certificate. However, okay, this gives you some flexibility if you have difficulty renting out the, the um, affordable units. 25 gives some flexibility to the building commissioner to, um, to not require that they be, uh, that the process is in, that those tenant selection process is in process when you get a certificate of occupancy. So I think that should be approved as well, unless there's objection. 26, town engineer shall inspect construction entryway and all on-site paved areas. I don't think that's, a, that's standard. All on-site utilities shall be underground. That's standard. Applicant shall provide an as-built plan. Um, like we did before, I'm gonna hold off on the specifics of the plan until we get all these questions answered. So 28, we'll hold off on. 29, there was no question about the exterior lighting being downcast and dark sky compliant. Um, number 30, regulations should meet all energy efficiency code and regulations stretch energy. Does this um, implicate the um, EV stations or is this separate, the stretch energy code? Yeah, you know, I was just thinking that as well. Um, it. Um... I mean, I, we, we probably have to do this, but I don't know if it, yeah, it, it has condition. to be done regardless of whether it's specified here in this exact okay. condition, but um, I can put a note um, whether, let me, let me. Um, Let's hold off on it. this and get more information. We'll come back to it. It doesn't look like it's, it, we may have to amend it. Okay. Any uh, but, but it looks like David O'Sullivan has oh. raised his hand. Oh. I was just going to tell you that it is, you know, the building code has an EV requirement and I know it. I just don't remember the amount. So, yeah, EV, uh, I'm just going to say EV um, ready. ready. Um, yeah. So, we'll get that information and we can come back to this one at that point. Sure. All right. 31 temporary shall be approved through the building commissioner, if, if any. Um, that's standard. The building, okay. The build, this is all, these are construction requirements that are all pretty standard. Surety bonds, temporary occupancy permits, um, that should be approved, that's standard. All utility work with the public right of way shall be conducted following regulations by the town. Again, pretty standard. These are for large projects. These are, some of the board members haven't seen these, but these are standard um, requirements. This is again for plans. I'm going to leave that again on plans till we get all the plans done. Uh, again, I will leave the DPW. There might be some questions on that. So 35 will leave to later. And the final certificates, certificates 
certificate of occupancy shall not be issued for any building or any unit until paving, landscape, and as built. Um, that's pretty much, that's again standard. You don't get the occupancy until you finish the project. Um, amenities. Smoke-free project, any objection? The applicant shall provide a minimum of electrical vehicles. We will hold off on that on 38, 39. We will um, hold off on 39. Uh, Mr. Chair. Judge? Yep. Yes. I had a question about okay. 37. 37. Just smoking. I just, I, 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 my ignorance shows here. Does this mean that there, that a tenant who smokes cannot smoke anywhere on the property, not outside, not inside? I mean, I'm not sure what to extent allowed by law, but that. What that really means. Yeah. How does that break down? I mean, in other places they've had, um, it has been, there's been a smoking area in some of the other um, projects we've approved. And it was only, it was within so many feet of a building, of, a, of the building or the window or the door. What does, I don't know the answer to your question. What precisely does that mean in terms of the tenant? So you cannot. They have to go off property over to um yeah as, as it's written but if the applicant does want to you know uh create designated areas or you know or wants to propose you know you know propose something related to smoking um you know the board would entertain that um, so this was just a standard condition that um was transferred over here so th this would permit as it to the extent allowed by law. law, law allows you to have smoking areas. I'm gathering. Um, what is the, the what is the desire of the of the management? Do you want to have a totally smoke free area? Um, your whole project is smoke free, even the grounds and the out by the the, the street, or do you want to have um, the ability to have a smoking a designated smoking area where people can go and have a cigarette? Mr. White. I'll defer to Mario on this one. Uh, I think our, our preferences is, is if we were going to be, we would be smoke free entirely. Entirely smoke free. This includes marijuana and vaping. It would. And those are legal things. I, you know, I, it seems why why don't we could limit this to another way of thinking about this is that you could you know do you, you know people already live in the existing buildings uh do you want to make a condition related to all the buildings or the whole property or uh just related to this new building and this is something that you know everyone can think about uh, between now and next time yeah. so yeah so i just don't know what it means <laughs> Yep. So I maybe the applicant knows what it means, but I don't. So, Mr. Chair. Yeah, Mr. Maxfield. I, I just wanted to to say I know on on this one number thirty seven where uh, where we had a similar uh, situation when we were dealing with that forty B application a couple of years ago, and we really yeah. had to uh, labor over where we wanted a smoking area. I remember the the consensus of the board at that time was you know people are going to smoke. We'd rather, uh, I think, as, as the town and community, would rather have it happening somewhere on the property in a designated area rather than it being pushed out onto a public sidewalk where yeah. the um, where the applicant has no jurisdiction. And I think for me that holds here in this case as well. I'd rather it be somewhere than you know just uh, people just walk onto the street and stand there and smoke cigarettes or or something like that. So I think I understand your, I think we could have a condition that allows um, the um, the management to create a, a smoking area. Um, let's come back to that next week. We'll leave this as it is, but I think that what, and we can look at the 40B language, Mr. Maxfield, that's a good, that's a good um, example. We'll look at the 40B language and see if that can be applied here. How's that? I like that. Okay. Um, 38, we'll wait off, hold off on. 39, we'll hold off on. 
management plan. Um, Move-ins move were between 8 and 7 p.m. That's, that's the, I think that's in the discretion of the management. Uh, snow plowed in the parking, it probably removed from the site as part of this clearing process. Let's hold off on, on 41 because that we'll find out more. We might have to say where it's moved to if you can't remove it from the site. 42. Oh, construction. Yeah, that's pretty much standard. 42. 43 is in terms of the management plan. All the property businesses are sold. The new owner shall meet with the zoning board of appeals at a public meeting to review the management plan. Yep, this is this is a a condition that we've been placing on uh, properties, uh, non owner occupied properties, for a while now. Forty three is standard. Forty four. All right, this is the. Mr. Judge, I'm sorry. Yes. Forty three. What is this paragraph subparagraph A? Is this? It's not even a complete sentence. What is this? The project shall be managed and plowed in the property business up until sold on it. It was still applicable to the site. Hmm. Uh, that is, uh, thank you for bringing that to my attention. Um, this might have been, um, I, I was moving things around a few <laughs> times. So maybe this, um, I'm going to go do this. That This might have by accident. <laughs> I'll look into where that should be placed, if at all. Okay. All right. With technical changes, 43 is approved. <laughs> <laughs> Without objection. Uh, 44 uh, and 45 are the um, logging and reporting requirements that are what we've included in, um, in recent application special permits. Parking, approved services only, that's standard. Number of spaces maintained by, okay, so the number of on-site spaces. On this one, do we want to just include the spaces in the new, the new um, parking? Sure, so that's uh, 41 lines, right? plus 40, so that's, uh, 47 plus 17. Yeah, it's, oh, it's 56, it's, right? 56 is the number, right? That's uh, correct. But it was 53. It's, it's, yeah, it's the 40, 43 plus the 30 minus the 17 should be the. Oh, it's 53. Sorry. Should, no, it's, it is 56. Six. 56. Oh. Um, okay. Uh, the 56 propo uh, proposed. Um, maybe, uh, at, uh, it'll be like as, as shown on play plan dated all right well, we'll uh, I, I need to play with this a little bit but all right so you'll come back we won't approve that till you come back with this with corrections the parking management plan should be followed at all times any parking management plan should come back to the public meeting we'll have to do that that's um wait 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 i thought they want that deleted no, there's always a parking management. Well, if there isn't a parking management plan, they don't have to come back, but it'll be part of the management plan. So reviews. So I'm, I'm not prepared to, to say there's not a parking mat. There's not a parking um, requirement or a plan for them. But if there is one, it has to be followed. So we'll hold off on it. We'll hold off on it for the time being. Uh, parking spaces. Clearly designated and clearly marked. Um, we need to know the numbers for those, so we'll come back to that. We'll get the numbers for those. And signage for that we can we can agree on fifty, I think. Landscaping maintained by the owner, along with the uh, in accordance with the management plan. Any plantings that die shall be replaced. All right, that's standard 50, 51. Reasonable efforts to use natural herbicides and non-toxic chemicals, appropriate warnings to tenants. I don't think there's any option, objection to that. 
If I hear any, please speak up. Members, mature trees shall be found in the area, except those shown in the approved plans to be removed shall remain and be maintained to provide visual screening from adjacent properties. All right, that's, that's we tend to always require this. And any uh, applicant has to come back for review and approval of the design of any permanent signage and any temporary signage. Standard. Stormwater and drainage. You know, we're going to wait on that till we get more from the, the, um, the engineer. We'll just make sure that, that we understand that better. Construction. So I think all these construction, and there's just a ton of them, they are, these are all standard what we require for major construction projects. Am I right, Maureen? They are. They are. This is all. And so instead of running through 56 through, uh, 63 and going through, I would like to have all of those approved as standard. And if anybody, and if upon reading this during the week, you come up with the concern, we can address it at that point, but let's approve 56 through 63. Um, then we move to 64 crosswalk shall be provided in the front entrance of off South Point Drive. The parking lot, okay, I think that's uh, not controversial. Benches, bike racks, we're going to leave those for later. Uh, the lot shall be approved at no more than 32.35.2%. We have to get to that finding. Um, um, Mr. Judge? Yeah. Um, since the applicant is going to be providing, you know, additional bike racks and, pic and picnic tables and the like, uh, the law coverage number, uh, the proposed law coverage may be increased. So yeah. the applicant should, you know, update the site plan to reflect any new amenities provided and then uh, update the law coverage uh, just, just so. Um, so, uh, so I have a question for staff then. Does a bike rack count as lot coverage? Well, if there's a concrete pad underneath. So do bike racks need a concrete pad? That's an excellent question. I don't know. Do you but like a picnic tables? table and um, that would, I would assume. And then the gravel, if it was even gravel underneath, um, that would yeah. count as law coverage. Even, even if it, the gravel's pervious? It's... Uh, Dave, uh, I feel like I asked you this question earlier this week. You uh, have, <laughs> have to look it up. So you're gonna have to... <laughs> I don't want to misquote it. Okay. Okay. Can move on if you like. Yep. We'll we'll move on sixty on. We'll move on to sixty six. I would encourage. Um, if, let's find out if, whether bike racks and uh, picnic tables increase lot coverage, and if it does, um, bike uh, increase in the number of bike racks and picnic tables. Let's figure out how much each bike rack increases in lot coverage, if that's the case. Um, so 66, we'll wait 67, just maintaining property. That seems to me to be non-controversial. 68, safe site distances and properly maintained the intersection of South Point Drive. Again, I don't think there's any controversy about that. 69, air conditioning on other, to be placed on the roof, not in the windows. That's true for all for this new building. Correct, Mr. O'Sullivan, everything's on the roof. Okay, 69, we can do lighting fixtures as um, identified in the building. So lighting fixtures and construction drawings, you have to use the same Mr. ones you have in the drawings. Mr. Yes. Judge, uh, Dave Ruskevitz has raised his hand. Yes, Mr. Ruskevitz. Okay, maximum lock coverage uh, it shall include percentage of a lock covered in the manner described in the section 6.17. Plus that portion of a lot covered by driveways, parking areas, walkways, tennis courts, swimming pools, or other similar materials. For the purposes of this bylaw, all such surfaces, whether constructed of impermeable materials, concrete, bituminous asphalt, oil, stone, and the like, or constructed of permeable materials, gravel, pea stone, and the like, shall be included in the calculation. Um, I think anything that has structure that would 
be impermeable. We've done solar panels, for instance, you calculate that percentage of the panel that would be uh, impermeable, or in that case, um, on, the, on the ground. So um, I don't know about a bike rack necessarily. There's not a lot of surface there. It'd be minimal, minuscule, um, but certainly something, if a bike rack was on concrete, the concrete would be included. Um, I imagine it would be hopeful if you already have impermeable surfaces, you would try to locate these types of things on that surface already, since it's already impermeable, uh, it would definitely be to their benefit, but um, uh, hopefully that's helpful. Um, so if we had one bike rack for every building, um, how many buildings are on the property? I don't know offhand. Okay. There's a new one. I, I, Mr. Martinez, do you know how many buildings are on the property? We can look on the site plan, but if we can figure out the worst it could be is a bike rack at every building and multiply that by the whatever the coverage is of the, the gravel underneath the bike path, a bike pad. So um, that would that's the number we need. That would be the worst case scenario for the in terms of increasing uh, coverage, uh, um, lot coverage. I will say for the most part, I've seen bike racks on concrete or asphalt, something that would be impermeable. Just also just to, to mount it there as a permanent fixture. Um, so that, that probably could be planned on. So if we, if you're looking at a bike, so the goal here is to figure out how large a, um, a footprint a bike rack has multiply that by the number of buildings that are available and that's the number we need to think about for increasing the potentially depending on the board vote increasing the um, lot coverage and also for picnic tables which was also raised so that's those are the two figures we need for the there are 10 sorry uh there are 10 10 buildings plus the one that we're looking to build Okay, so we got eleven buildings total. Okay, well, there yes, are there are some bike racks already. Right, that currently exist. Yep. Yeah. But I'm, I'm I'm trying to give the worst case scenario, then we can work back from there. So we're not, and we're talking about a couple of different um, picnic tables as well. Okay, so we're we'll leave the we're going to leave the um, coverage ratio another time light fixtures um, as submitted as traffic study shall be reviewed and approved by town engineer private okay that's already ta that's taken place traffic study is taking place stormwater management report is, is there a new store has he reviewed this stormwater report or does that have to be done yet um the town engineer is currently reviewing it okay so we can to, it has to be done before the building permit is issued. Correct. It doesn't it doesn't um, negate the need for the plan the uh, engineer to review it. All right. Full construction drawings have to be prepared and submitted. That's standard. All site demolitions will follow the approved plans as identified and leave those. Well, we, you can fill in these sheets at a later point. So we're not yep. approved that one until it's filled in. 73 will leave 74. I don't know. I mean, is this just the building itself and not the sites? We haven't had a lot of questions about the building itself. Uh, this is just a um, a carry forward from the uh, 2018 special permit. Uh, this was a, a condition from that 2018 permit, um, and then um, we modified it just to reflect uh, the sheet number change. And, and you, well, in two weeks we can have the date, so we'll know what, yep. it's, what it is. Okay, so we'll leave it for now. 75 management plan. Five guests is a minimum. Um, that's been. A, was, we talked about that. I don't think there's a concern about this. 76, new property owner shall return to the ZBI at a public meeting to approve and update the management plan. I think we should approve that. That's not that's standard. It's required even by another condition. The removal of the mansard roof and interior model of all existing buildings. 
shall continue during construction of the approved building. All building exterior renovations shall be completed prior to receiving final. All right, this is carried over from the earlier um, special permit and 77, 78, 1.6 park installs per unit. And that's been, that was the, the original as well. Okay, so I think we've got um, most of the non-controversial low-hanging fruit taken care of. Uh, and we're coming up to nine, just a little after nine o'clock. Um, I would propose that unless anybody has a question with any of the conditions that we approved tonight, um, that we that we move to approve these conditions and we'll come back and do the ones which are left hanging um, in two weeks. And we'll also do our findings at that time as well and make the decision. Ms. Pollock. Um, I would suggest the board that that you hold off uh, approving any conditions until the final, um, you know, your your final deliberation and vote on this permit, and uh, and after you make your findings, um, because there could be, you know, uh, there could be a modification between now and, and the next meeting, so uh, we wouldn't want to approve anything uh, prematurely. But we could, we, there's nothing that would pro prohibit us from coming back and modifying a condition that we approved at the next meeting. I think I'm yeah, but it, it's a condition of the permit. So you haven't approved the permit yet. So I would right. recommend that you approve the conditions as part of the, you know, approved, uh, you know, if you so choose to approve the, the special permit, uh, it, it's approving the special permit with conditions. So I, I would recommend that you do that at the same time. But you have informally now, you know, have indicated that the ones that you have would like to approve we've taken note of so at the next meeting uh you i would say if there aren't any changes to the ones that you have informally approved that we can just skip skip those um um and not have to like read read those one, particular ones out loud unless you would like to modify any of them so um i want what i'd like to do is i understand um uh, your your point so what I'd like to do is um, have an acknowledgement that we've done, we've agreed to these um, conditions without a vote, an acknowledgement there's no objection, and then we will move on next week with all but these, we'll deal with all the other conditions. And we'll have a final vote, which will wrap these and the other ones together all at once. But um, these, we've locked these down, and unless anybody objects, um, I'd like to move forward with, consider these, uh, Consider these done and move forward with the new conditions next week or in two weeks. Well, some of them, I think a few of them need some there's, forms filled in. Right? Yeah, there's technical oh, conforming okay. changes that okay. we need to, that we've identified and authorizers. Those we can deal with, yeah. Fine. We always authorize the staff to make technical unconforming changes. Uh, it's important. Um, Maureen, what do we have on tap for two weeks from now? Anything else on the agenda? Yeah, so there are two other applications. Uh, one, uh, two special permit applications. One to deal with uh, the installation of like a fiber optic cabinet uh, that will be located on the property of Aspen Chase Apartments at 615 Main Street. Um, I think that application will be relatively straightforward. Famous last words. And then um, also um, Applewood, uh, the senior uh, living, uh, the, the retirement community uh, is submitting a special permit application um, for um, three additions to their building, um, including um, that will include nine new uh, apartment units um, and a, a inside pool and an enclosed um, atrium and a meeting room and um so but we can put this item also on the agenda all right so this we can have this item first deal with the other two subsequently does that date work for um the applicant mr white and, and that would be thursday september 22nd and the meeting would start at six o'clock via zoom hold on let me just gotta make sure that there's no conflict Thursday the 22nd. Everybody check your 
that work that works for me. Um, All right for me. I, yeah, I cannot I, be all in the twenty second, but I can have our our managers who otherwise would have been here today attend that meeting, so you can ask them your questions directly if that's okay, Mr. Judge. That would be fine. I should be available, or somebody, either me or Chris Chamberlain from the office, will be available. All right, and I'll make myself available. I, we do have some business in Boston that day, but I think I'll be back in time for six o'clock. So, oh, um, yeah, but I, you know, I'll figure out a way to do it. All right. Okay. Um, so, I is, do I have a motion to continue the public meeting, hearing, and meeting on this matter? to our next board meeting on um, September 22nd. Moved. Is there a second? Second. Roll call vote, chair votes aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? Aye. Ms. Marshall? Aye. Motion carries, motion is unanimous. Um, and you know, once I looked at this, the date, Maureen, I said I wanted to do this one first. Perhaps we can have this um, second, just in case there's traffic coming back from Boston, and the uh, two other ones are maybe somebody else will be um, can share that the first two, just to make sure that I get back for the uh, for this one. So okay, all right. So we'll, let's work that out. I want to make sure that all the time we put into this, I don't, I don't. Sure. Miss Yep. So the meeting so. will start at six o'clock on Thursday, September 22nd. Yep. And then the board will open the public hearing for the fiber optic yep. uh, proposal. And then, and then we'll do this one. And yeah. then continue this one. Okay. I just, I don't know when, you know, who knows? Doctors take a long time to, All right. sometimes well, it's late, right? You know, you get, it can take um, a while. Okay. Well, and right. then, uh, I guess uh, just real quick. Uh, so uh, if Dylan, uh, if you want to chair uh, that first application, uh, you're nodding your head. So, okay, there you go. All so right. move, so moved. Give me a look. Yep. All right. And you'll have to find somebody. And uh, Ms. Marshall, you will probably be on that panel if I'm not on the panel, because you only five. So you're getting a workout right away. All right. And then I'll disappear back into the woodwork. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Um, I have one one last question. I I, I was taking notes of of the, the changes that have been requested and information that has been requested. But Maureen, will you circulate your notes as well, just so oh, that yeah. we're all on the yeah. same page? Yep. And if I may add, as you were going through that, that list, Maureen, there was two items that I believe you got today. One was the demographic info information requested as it relates to families. Um, and the other one was uh, information as to issues we've had on site. And that, that was our overzealous uh, baseball player. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Um, the, we completed our work on this application. The next order of business for the um, board is to have to listen to public comment on any matter not before the board tonight. Are there um, members of the public who wish to speak on any matter? Well, again, we thank you, um, the applicants, for being on the call. The long process. We appreciate your your willingness to work with us on this, and uh, we'll see you next week. Um, two weeks. Excuse me. We'll see you in two weeks at the next meeting. So you can you can leave now if you wish. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Much. Really Have a good night. Um. So, are there members of the public who wish to comment on any matter that was not before the board tonight? And if you're calling in, you'd press star nine. Well, no one's calling in. Um, or if you're at a computer or something, you would press the raise the hand feature. All right. No comments from the public. Um, is there any old business or not business not anticipated in the last 24 hours? We've gone through the schedule. So that's pretty much it. Oh, uh, we do have someone from the public raising their hand actually. Okay, um, Mr. Du Bois, please state your name and uh, your comment, please. 
name and address for the record, and unmute yourself. Oh, whoops. Uh, sorry, I thought I unmuted him. Oh, there we he's go. unmuted. Yep. Uh, I had a question with respect to the 12 month lease. Is that for the whole complex or for the building? Um, this, this is, and it's a good question. The board may want to deal with that, but we cannot take um, and make comments on the matters before the, the board tonight. And that was a matter before the board. Um, so understood. Sorry. Yeah, that's, that's okay. That's, it's a good question, but it's just not one that we can deal with um, specifically <laughs> by our rules and by the, the, the town rules. Thank you though. Any other question? All right. Um, if not, and if there's no new business, I would entertain a motion to adjourn tonight and continue the uh, adjourn tonight. Uh, we continue the matter uh, until two weeks from now. Do I have a motion? Mr. Maxfield moves. Is there a second? Ms. Marshall second. moves. There is no debate on the motion to adjourn. Uh, it's a roll call vote. I vote aye. Mr. Max Shields? Aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? Aye. Ms. Marshall? Aye. Motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you all for your work tonight. Aye, Appreciate it. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone.